welcome everybody. It's the House Appropriations Committee and we are continuing our work this morning uh, at this one o'clock meeting. First on the agenda, we have the, the state treasurer and I believe um, Treasurer Pierce, you have brought other people to join you, uh, but we have three items that we wanted to cover with you. The first that I would only, I, I think that we only need to spend a very bit of time on is uh, the bond investment earnings that are reflected in the budget adjustment to help um, bring us to balance. And after that, I would like to move to uh, the strategy for the FY 2020 closeout. Um, there, there's a couple of options on the table and we'd like to hear from you on that. And that should, I'd like to spend about 25 minutes there. And then I'd like to finish up with um, a possible bill that this uh, committee will be considering regarding municipal borrowing. And if we could spend about 25 minutes on that. Uh, Teresa, will you help me keep track of time? Because we have a testimony at 2.15 from Legislative Council yes. on, um, on municipal borrowing that I need to be respectful of the Treasurer's time and of Legislative Council's time. So good, more, uh, good afternoon, Beth. Are you, uh, you're, you're one of the telephones I'm looking at? Uh, that is correct. Can you hear me? We can hear you. We can't see you, but we can hear okay. you. All right. So Welcome. Do you want me to begin? Yes, I'd like to start with the bond investment earnings. Please. Certainly. So that won't take much time at all. Uh, we did take a look at that uh, to make sure that um, uh, there were no issues with it. And uh, for tax purposes, um, we treat the bonds as, as um, proceeds as being held in a pro uh, fund within the general fund. Bottom line is that you can use those without restriction. Uh, so we're, we're comfortable with uh, that inclusion in the uh, BAA. Okay, um, are there any committee members that have any question on that piece? We just want to make the full circle. Um, I do not, uh, Peter Fagan. Hey, Beth, thank you for coming on. Quick question, are those strictly from the uh, the um, COVID relief fund, or is there more in the more that uh, that interest has been generated from? Uh, these are bond funds that uh, uh, from from um, our various uh, um, bond issuance, and uh, when when they when we go forward with those, as uh, our bond council uh, took a look at this, that uh, that uh, tax rules permit us to treat them as co being co-mingled with the general fund and deemed spent. So this is something that uh, we've done in the distant past, um, uh, and uh, it's it's uh, but it's not COVID related. Thank you. Thank you. I don't see any other questions, um, Treasurer Pierce. So um, uh, no, I do. I have one from Representative Lanfer. Thank you. I just I just want to be clear that I'm understanding this. We're talking about right now is just a testimony on the two point seven four that's in the. Uh, governor's recommend, correct? Yes, that is correct. Thank you. Okay, I don't see any other questions. Um, Diane, your hand is up. If you'll put that down so I don't get, I, I get easily confused. So uh, let's move to the next topic, Beth. Um, I wanted to talk about um, the fiscal year 2020 closeout. And we also have Commissioner Gresham the administration has brought forth their proposal and uh, part of the proposal is to, um, to um, address the deferred revenues that would be coming in on July 15 and, and doing a cash closeout and using reserves. And we understand that you may have a, a second proposal for us to consider. Uh, yes. So should I begin? You should, please. Thank you. Okay. So um, uh, first, I want to say that uh, whether you, whichever method you pick, will not have an impact in terms of the merits of the uh, the items within the Budget Adjustment Act. Uh, the the only issue is how you treat the um, uh, the year end close. And uh, what, if I'm and Adam can correct me if uh, if I'm misrepresenting this, but I think the proposal was to to use the reserves. And then replenish them in um, in 2021 when you uh, when those collections become available. An alternative way to do this, and I think that uh, one that I would recommend 
uh, is that uh, instead of doing that uh, on a gap basis and not on a cash basis, our budget is done on a cash basis, um, uh, gap accounting for the uh, cap of the state's financial report is on, on a um, accrual basis. Uh, we, we accrue those revenues um, for, for gap purposes. Uh, and, and this, the suggestion or the recommendation I have is rather than hit the reserves and then replenish them in the next year when there's some uncertainty in that next year, is to grab the um, the uh, the uh, uh, collections from July 15th and bring them in um, as if you would essentially a modified accrual on the revenues only, not a modified a full modified accrual. So I describe this not as modified accrual, but um, but cash uh, with with an accrual provision. And uh, you would recognize those in the current year, so fiscal year 20. And, uh, and then um, you would reduce the need to hit reserves um, in, the, in the education fund, for instance, you're still going uh, to need to, uh, to, to um, uh, use the reserve accounts uh, in addition to um, uh, pulling those revenues forward that, uh, for instance, the sales tax. Uh, we think that this has some advantages for a couple of reasons. One is comparability. If you leave the dollars in the um, um, in, in fiscal year 21, basically your tax revenues in 20 are going to be very low. The next year you're going to have one, not quite twice, because obviously we know that there's going to be some revenue loss, but you're going to have an inflated amount in 21. And then in 22, you're going to be back down to uh, uh, whatever the new normal is, to be very frank. So for, from a comparability purposes, it uh, wreaks havoc with the budget. It wreaks havoc uh, with um, outside folks looking at it. Uh, we think that a more measured approach would be to say we're recognizing those revenues that were deferred in the, um, in, in the current year, in fiscal year 20, and accruing those. I've talked to I, – I, I am the president of a group called NASAC, the National Association of Auditors, Comptrollers, and Treasurers. And we have convened a, a working group, uh, roughly a little over a half dozen treasurers and, and, um, and, and tre uh, excuse me, treasurers and comptrollers. And we've discussed this issue um, at, at yesterday's meeting and the week before. And um, um, uh, frankly, uh, the, the, the uh, response has been um, almost to a person, it is to a person that this, is, this would be a uh, preferred method of doing it. I, I'm gonna let go of the rest of my time. If it's okay with you, just ask, um, um, uh, Tom Houston, who's uh, our financial advisor, who works at the bond rating agencies on the state's behalf and works with us when we're, when we're putting together bond deals as well, um, and is uh, with um, Public Resource Advisory Group, which is um, uh, deals with several states. And if it would be okay with you, uh, Madam Chair, I'll stop talking and let him uh, present, uh, you know, what he thinks the, uh, the rating agencies would, uh, would, would view uh, either proposal. Thank you, um, Treasurer Pierce. Um, I only caught your first name, Tom. I didn't hear the last name, Tom. Uh, yes, it's uh, Hustis, H-U-E-S-T-I-S. -E uh, uh, well, welcome, Mr. Hustis. Um, we look forward to your information, and why don't you just jump right in, please? Okay, happy to do so. Um, thank you. So yes, um, so the so we've had a various uh, various discussions with the rating agencies over the past several months with regard to um, different states and how they're uh, going to approach um, the issues that you're facing in terms of the delay uh, of uh, income tax, sales tax, and uh, in Vermont's case, meals and rooms tax. And the, the rating agencies understand that this is this is a trying time for states and that they're going to do things that are a little bit unusual in terms of, you know, how they've acted over, you know, the in, as Beth said, in, in normal times. Um, uh, we specifically asked about the uh, using the deferral revenue um, to as uh, as a way to balance the budget and you know they they um they said you know they thought they thought that was fine they wouldn't have any issue in it um and i i would point out what their what their main concern right now is for most states is liquidity so is the state in uh position from a cash uh basis and from available other sources to stay liquid and to be able to, you know, make its make its payroll, make uh, not uh, let vendor payments 
lapse or or delayed and and for sure make its payment in terms of uh, debt service and pension payments in terms of the long term fixed obligations. Um, and then the rating agencies are also looking at um, they're stated looking at what is going to what what's the state going to look like after uh, COVID-19, you know, we get through this. So their, their ratings are long-term. They're, they're supposed to have a long-term perspective. And so, um, you know, each state is different in this. And so, but they're, they're, they're asking questions in terms of, okay, what is your state going to look like after you get through this? And I think the proposal that Beth has made in terms of, keeping the reserves intact and using kind of the deferred revenue proposal in order to balance the current year budget makes sense. Uh, that you'll have those reserves in place to deal with uh, future, fisc you know, for future fiscal year issues. And a number of states are facing this. I just got something across, my <laughs> across in my email that uh, California is saying they're gonna have a a $54 billion hole in their budget between now and uh, 2021. And, um, you know, uh, and we work with them. And then we in Minnesota announced earlier this week uh, in terms of um, uh, $3.6 billion through the end of 2021. Uh, uh, so a lot of people, you know, a lot of states are, are dealing with this issue. And I think that what you have now is you have an issue in terms of the timing of your revenue. It, it seems to make sense to the rating agencies and makes sense to me from a long term credit perspective to save your reserves and uh, use this in order to balance the budget. Thank you. Do you um, have you heard from other states to see how they're closing out their end of year using one method or another or something totally different? Um, I think, you know, it, I, Beth has probably heard from more states right now. I think there are a lot of states are in kind of the um, haven't announced uh, how, you know, options. Uh, you've seen things like the state of New Jersey. There are some states that have a constitutional um, issue with changing the way that they budget um, so that they have to they have to buy uh, they have to go by on a cash basis. So one of our clients, the state of West Virginia is in that, uh, in that camp and they can't do something like this. So there's a couple of states that, that can't uh, make an adjustment in terms of their, of how they actually are going to balance the budget. Um, New Jersey has extended their fiscal year. So they've extended the, um, their fiscal year, I think till the end of July. I'm not, I'm not positive, they're not a client, but you know, that is kind of unusual and that is um, definitely going to be an issue in terms of comparability um, and, it, you know, it is likely going to cause a bunch of unintended consequences, I think. Um, but so there's a lot. So states are looking at this. I've already heard, I think, from uh, Georgia that they're considering uh, what Beth has proposed um, that I don't believe that is public yet. Um, so um, mm -hmm. uh, that may or may not be public, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, but uh, so a number of states are um, looking at different, uh, different ways. Uh, thank you. And, and I do have to ask you because people may be listening to this recording and I jumped right in and Beth did introduce you, but just for the record, would you state your name and your position so it's on the, it's on the recording? Absolutely. It's Thomas Hustis, H-U-E-S-T-I-S. -E I'm a senior managing director for the firm, with the firm Public Resources Advisory Group, uh, and I'm in the New York office. Thank you. Uh, we have a question from Representative Helm. Do you, do you take some questions? Just, just curious. So if you extend, like New Jersey did, if you extend your your fiscal year, mm -hmm. then what happens the next year? Don't you <laughs> better short? I, yeah, I don't know if they changed their fiscal year or they just extended the current year. I, I'm sorry, I, I 
I realize I don't, I don't know the specifics about what happens later. I know, I, I believe they just, they'll just have a, a shorter fiscal year next year, but I'm not positive about that. Well, then it's, you know, you, 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 you can take it in the shorts next year <laughs> as well as this year. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I have a question from Representative Hooper and then Representative Fagan. Hi, Mr. Hustis. Do you have any do you have any insight into how it would be viewed that we would make this change as Treasurer Pierce is proposing um, over the long run? It, it, essentially, it's an expedient thing to do to solve this problem. Mm -hmm. And does that begin to make us look like we're kind of searching for shortcuts and easy ways to solve a problem rather than addressing it as, you know, at these problems as they come up? Right. I think that's a great question. And it's a question that, that we've asked the rating agencies as kind of representatives of the market and representatives of, of the investor community is would be, you know, a, something like this um, look strange. And I, I think that, that there is an expectation that th this crisis is um, unprecedented since, you know, since the, uh, um, you know, since the Second World War, and that there, the states are going to need to do things that are a little different than what they've done in the past. And AAA states are, are, you know, are going to maybe have to do things in terms of one-time money. And, and this is what the rating agencies are saying, that, that they understand that, that, that you know, that, that the budget might be structurally imbalanced for a period. But what they're going to, what they're looking at is how you, what, what decisions you're making, you know, for the long-term view of the state. And I don't think this is something that is, you know, that you're trying to do to game the system or anything in terms of the uh, in terms of your long-term financial position, you're taking revenues that are going to be uh, allocated and uh, they're going to be um, you, it's you know shown in your financial statements as 2020 uh, revenues and you're going to recognize those in your budget uh, this year. So I, I don't think they'll want one. I think that that the investor community and the rating agencies expect you to make decisions and make and implement things that you wouldn't see in a normal time. But they also uh, recognize that um, you know you're doing this for a reason, and that they're expecting you to come out in a um, you know in a healthy position in a year or two. Kitty, may I follow up with it? Uh, yes. Um, so you mentioned the, the importance of showing that we're maintaining our liquidity. Uh, yes. Does, by preserving our reserves at this point, at least does that feed into that perception that, or the fact that we are trying to maintain our liquidity? Can I tie those two together or is that a separate issue? I think it's a separate issue. Beth, Beth, probably as the treasurer would have a better um, perspective on that. But I think, you know, that the the things um, you're not doing any you're not doing anything to hurt your liquidity in this. Um, you know, I, that would be my perspective. Thank you, Representative Fagan. Thank you, and thank you for coming on, Mr. Hustis. Um, I think you pretty much answered my questions. I, my, my concern, I had sent two questions forward uh, this morning, uh, was um, the fact that this is a one-off, if you will, a, a limited time, a one-time limited uh, duration use of, of a, a modified accrual basis accounting. Um, you know, how yeah. would that, could that possibly hurt us? And you've just said, no, it won't actually be recruit the uh, bond agencies are looking at the liquidity and they appreciate the comparability of our statements going forward. So this will, this will make sure that they remain as such. 
And then my, my other question was, um, um, how is this looked at from a generally accepted accounting principles viewpoint of, of we were changing it once and going back to the, uh, the cash basis at the end of this? I am not a CPA, so I, um, I don't know that, I don't know that question. And okay. uh, my guess is that it's um, in the schedules in terms of budget versus actual and then making the um, um, adjustments to the financial statement, it will be easier. But I, I, I don't know if uh, I, I, I believe the, um, the accountants accept the budget numbers as, as you um, present them and then and then do their adjustments from there. But uh, I am not a CPA. But really, in your, in your mind here, the biggest piece is maintaining liquidity, ensuring we follow through with, uh, with our obligations and continue to pay them, and uh, being comparable over fiscal years. Yes, Thank you said you. it very well. Uh, Madam Chair, may I, may I respond to that question as well? Yes, you, yes Beth, please. OK, so I think that. Uh, uh, Gap accounting is gap accounting, and that's what you do with your financial statements. The budget is the um, is is uh, uh, is a matter for the legislature. Making this one, one change, I think, again gets back to the issue of uh, comparability. I think it's a better presentation of the budget and um, and and the position that the state is in. Um, again, I'm not an accountant. I'm not. A, I'm not. A, I used to be, but I've um, I've um, uh, worked in a Graduated. slightly different area now. But um, um, I have talked this through with the uh, comptroller members of our working group, and uh, they feel pretty com very comfortable with this. That does include the uh, the folks from uh, Georgia that um, that um, uh, that Tom mentioned. Um, and I saw, you know, the the survey that um, that's being done by JFO. There's a little bit of uh, talking past each other. A lot of folks are looking at this in, the, in terms of the question of borrowing, but I did see other states that are looking at some variation of this, um, um, and. Uh, I think it is the best possible presentation given these unusual circumstances. Thank you very much. Uh, we have two more questions. Um, Mr. Do you have time for questions? I, I want to make sure I'm, 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 I'm being considerate of your time. Yes, yes, I'm fine. Uh, okay. yes. Uh, we have uh, Representative Conquest and Representative Jessup. Uh, thank you. Um, Mr. Eustace, I think I understood you to say that the part of the reason that the that the rating agencies are okay with us um, thinking about doing this is that because it was it was um, uh, forecasted revenue and though we won't actually have it, um, we're just we're just uh, recognizing it in this fiscal year. Um, and my question is, so the forecast was done in different times. Are the are they expecting a, any particular reduction in the revenue that we might um, account for in this year? I mean, is there a, a standard or some reasonable amount that they would they would look uh, kindly on if we were to reduce our the recognition of the revenue by a certain amount? That's a that's a really good question. The the actual I think the proposal is and what I what. I, um, is that it's only the revenue that's being earned in fiscal year 2020 and paid in 21. So it wouldn't be any lost revenue that you would recognize in the current fiscal year. It would only be the revenue that would have otherwise been paid uh, in, in um, for t essentially for tax year 2019, if you're thinking about income tax. It's only that revenue that be er, that was earned in 2019 and and was uh, required to be paid in 2020. Does yeah. that make sense? So it's not forecast; it's kind of earned. Uh, um, true enough. Uh, thank you for that. That's helpful for me, my, my thinking. Um, and maybe I maybe I just need to understand a little more clearly. So what? One of the issues that we're looking at is that we, although um, certain taxes might be owed because they were earned in 2020 mm -hmm. we may not get all of them we, we 
don't expect that people will actually be able to pay all of those taxes. Um, and so there's going to be a possibly a reduction between what might be owed and what we actually receive. Right. My understanding is your tax department already looks at, and Beth, jump in here, but your tax department already codes revenue uh, that was, that is owed in one period and paid in and um, uh, expected to be paid in this in a, a later fiscal year. So I think this is all going to be tracked. I mean, that's the, I know that's the discussion with a number of states. Go ahead, Beth. If I if I could, that is that is precisely the case, and it would be rec uh, money that was actually paid in July uh, for 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 the 2020 year. Um, it wouldn't be an estimate of what else is owed, uh, so it would be an actual number, and it is tracked. Um, as, and uh, uh, I would point out that at least one state that I saw does this on a regular basis. Um, it's, it's again, it's not modified accrual; it's kind of a modified cash. But I think it's a again a reasonable approach. Thank you, Beth. That's that's um, comforting to understand that. Uh, Jessup. Yeah, thank you. I think maybe Chip asked the question. What I'm trying to sort through in my mind is what are the pros and cons if the revenues don't come in as expected? And I guess I'm what I've heard so far, and maybe I'm not fully following, is that we don't go into the reserve funds, and those are there for fiscal year 21, which we understand will be a harder year, but it's it doesn't take away the challenge that lies before us. Yeah, I, I don't know the the actual um, the where the um, the 20 closeout and the budget stands. I know that um, so there may be a gap um, between um, you know even recognizing revenue that that is ex expected to be earned in 20 and paid in 21 doesn't f f uh, fully um, uh, close the gap. I, I don't know that. So it may not, uh, this is Beth again, it may not close all the gap, for instance, in the Ed Fund using the reserves and accruing those revenues. I, um, uh, in other words, recognizing those revenues in July that uh, uh, were um, attributable to, uh, to June, you're still going to have um, some um, I'm trying to find the right word, financial difficulties there. But um, uh, the, um, uh, again, uh, this would not be any money that, that's just money that would actually have been collected um, in, in that uh, June period had you not uh, made the decision to push it out a little further. Okay. Thank you. Uh, this, Kimberly, I didn't mean to jump in. Are you finished? Thank you. Uh, Je Beth and Tom, just so that I understand, n either method that we use, whether we use reserves first or whether we uh, use these dollars that come in and, and count them for 2020, if those revenues come up short, both proposals would count on using our, our reserves to, to cover the difference because we can't go into 21 with a deficit. Mm -hmm. That would be correct for uh, getting, um, uh, you, you, you still would only recognize the amount that was um, um, uh, um, accrued or deferred into the next year and accruing it back into 2020. And if you still had a problem, you would have to address it. Uh, part of what you're doing today with the Budget Adjustment Act. Um, and uh, uh, so I think that, that that is the correct answer to that. I, again, uh, the, the methodology here would just create um, a little bit more comparability and not put you in a position where mm -hmm. those reserves uh, 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 are, are depleted. Granted, you will be um, uh, replenishing it at least in part in the next year, but I think it's a, it's a cleaner uh, presentation of your final financial condition. I understand that piece and, and what you said about comparability is, is, is an important between 2021 and then back to 22, the up and the down, the up, the down. Uh, Representative Townsend? Yes, thank you. Um, if, if things came up short, is this where the Interfund Borrowing Authority might come into play to help adjust for that shortness of dollars? Uh, that's, 
That is also a very good question. So um, we do have pooled cash between uh, several funds, including the general fund, transportation, and education fund. So if you ended up with a um, a cash deficit, in other words, you um, in in one fund, uh, it certainly could have what's called a borrowing between another fund, a do to do from, um, to to replenish that. It wouldn't change the financial condition of the fund, however, because it would still be in deficit. Because if you if you provided it you know, a, a cash loan, uh, on one side you'd have a cash asset, but on the other side you'd have a liability on, on the on, on the other side. So it would not change the structural or the um, or the temporary deficit that you have. Um, but it um, it does permit you to have cash to um to essentially continue to make the uh, the payments that are appropriate to that for that fund. Thank you. And this is Tom, just to add, Dad, but that, that is, I, I, I understand that as part of the liquidity that, um, you know, that I, that I was talking about that's important to the rating agencies to be able to make sure that you have enough sources in, of cash to uh, make your payments um, for unanticipated uh, issues. <laughs> So just to be clear, Tom, in your position, you closing out the end of the year in, Ver in Vermont, you would choose using the modified accrual method over, over using reserves at the end of the year? Um, so I, 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 I I think that um, that is the more prudent way. I don't think that, um, you know, I don't think that either way would cause you a rating downgrade or, or anything like that. But I agree that that is the more, uh, for me, that's, uh, that would be the more prudent way, yes. Thank you. Um, Representative Jessup, your hand, is it up from before? Okay. Um, or question did you want to weigh in or would you like a conversation with the committee at a different time it, it's totally up to you i don't want to put you um you know in, in a hot seat that that you haven't been prepared for uh part nature of my uh, work i'm always in a hot seat in front of you guys um so uh, you know i just had a couple of comments and i would start off by saying that the treasurer and i um, had a conversation about what is uh, Adam, the, a poor connection. Commissioner Gresham, can you turn off your video and then it'll reduce the streaming and we'll hear you better. Hello? No, you're still in slow motion. Do you have another device on or anything? I don't, uh, but you know what? If I, uh, let me get up and no, move to right another now. room. You're good right where you are. Oh, okay. Don't move. <laughs> so if I stand on my head, everyone can see me. <laughs> so I, I No, it's not working. I'm sorry, Adam. Uh, sorry, let me, let me try to move. Give me Here. I don't think that's any better. Can you call in? Well, I, have, I haven't stopped yet. Oh, okay. Is that any better? Well, let's try it. Anyway, um, I think, you know, there are a couple of things. One we mentioned, um, and which I think kind of was the deciding factor for us. And that was that we do believe um, that uh, we're in a, a volatile period here. Um, and, you know, to Tom Kavet's point that he made several days ago, um, everything is in flux. Uh, the federal construct um, is somewhat vague still, and we can't predict what will come out of DC. Uh, we can't predict what will come out of this, but we do believe um, that uh, it might, we don't know, but there could be some um, benefit to using reserves in terms of how we stand with the federal government. Um, you know, there is oftentimes strings attached to federal money 
And, you know, I think what was for us was the deciding factor was that uh, it may well be down the road um, that states that have used the reserves and used the resources that are available to them uh, will be in better stead than states that haven't. Uh, I certainly can't confirm that, but it does seem, again, like it's standard federal practice to ask to uh, kind of meet them in the middle with Medicaid, with transportation money uh, and the like. And so, you know, that for us seemed to be an important uh, or, you know, the deciding factor for us. Um, but, uh, you know, I'll make a couple of more points um, in that, in that, you know, you've heard what other states are doing, or you've heard that other states are doing different things. And, you know, I can tell you uh, that states are all over the map on this. Um, you know, I, I'm not uh, uh, participating in NASAC um, conferences, but we are quite active in NASBO, which is the National Association of State. I that what states doing often reflects their underlying fundamentals. Some states have the luxury of uh, doing one thing and some states don't have that luxury. So I think what you'll find is um, what states do is on territory rounds are and to what their uh, fiscal positions are. Um, what I will also say though, is we've heard, I think we've talked quite a bit about rating agencies. And, you know, I, I will acknowledge that the rating agencies, I think, are too all over um, in terms of their opinions. But uh, yesterday afternoon, um, I figured just because it may well come up that it would be helpful to speak to the rating agencies on that. So in the Moody's uh, report uh, that was done um, in uh, July of last year, um, the two analysts on that report that did the State of Vermont report, Matthew Butler and Marsha Van Wagner, uh, you know, I called both of them and I got a hold of Marsha. And I, I can tell you that she, whether we use reserves or whether we use a cool accounting, uh, her opinion was not strong. Um, you know, to what uh, Tom and, and, and the treasurer both said earlier, uh, their, um, their opinion is governed much more by the uh, liquidity of a state uh, and how you manage uh, your budget and how you manage your liquidity and what available liquidity you have. They did not have a strong opinion on whether you use reserves or whether you don't use reserves. And, you know, kind of backing that up, I can also confirm to you in a reserve study that we did, you know, over the past, uh, actually we did last year, uh, there were plenty during the Great Recession. There were plenty of AAA states that use reserves, including Georgia, North Carolina, Florida, Virginia, Tennessee. In fact, the only AAA state that did not use reserves during the Great Recession was Delaware. So it's not like you're in the penitentiary if you use your reserves. In fact, the, age of the rating agencies um, often believe that that is what reserves are for, to smooth out um, you know, various cash flow issues, and that's why you have reserves. So, you know, I, I would merely say that, you know, we're not in jail if we use reserves. The other thing I would mention is that, you know, there was a lot of discussion. I think Representative Jessup had asked the question, um, you know, kind of getting at the risk profile, you know, if you use reserves and the expected revenue does not come in, that means that you are thus for those herbs, but it's the same if you use an accrual method because an accrual method, you are essentially putting a receivable into your um, budget and you're assuming that you are going to receive X amount of revenue. If you don't receive that amount of revenue, you're using your reserves anyway. So your risk profile is substantially the same. You know, the reserves are going to be your uh, kind of money of last resort. Um, so, uh, you know, I just think it's important to understand that. And, um, it, you know, from our standpoint, it's not like one is, is riskier than the other, because at the end of the day, if you don't receive the money that you anticipated receiving, it's the reserves that are going to fill your budget. So, you know, really, that's, that's all I'll say. And, you know, I guess to repeat what I said several days ago, the, the beauty of it is, is Vermont, we have a choice. We don't have to do a little unique maneuver here. 
we can do as we always always have done. And, um, you know, I think that's a good thing. So anyway, I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Um, Treasurer Pierce, did you, I, your box lit up? But... Uh, well, I think that one of the things I would say is that we've already done a unique event. We pushed out those revenues into, a, into another fiscal year on a cash basis. Um, so in, in fact, we have done a, uh, a unique event that kind that what it does in the process is it puts our financials into um, uh, 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 a continuum that does it again, not not as much too much and then 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 back to whatever, as I said, that new normal will be. Um, so we have done a unique event, I think that we can can compensate for the fact that, of that unique event and properly address those. And you're not gonna accrue any more than what you've already collected in June. So it's a known number, uh, excuse me, in July. Uh, it's a known number. It's not something where you're taking a guess and then if the guess doesn't uh, doesn't work out, you've got a problem. Um, it, will be a, it will be a known, I think it's more consistent with uh, proper presentation. And it does um, point out that absent that deferral, we would use no reserves or less reserves. And I think that's a good message to the rating agencies and to the financial community. Okay, thank you, Treasurer Pierce. Are there any final questions? Uh, Tom, thank you very much for joining us. I, I appreciate, I know the committee appreciates you, you coming on and um, wishes being in New York City is all I can say right now to you. Well, thank you very much. I enjoyed it. And if, if anything further comes up, I'd be happy to uh, um, testify again. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, are we set then to move to the next topic, Adam or, or um, Beth? Was there anything else that you needed to have our committee here? Uh, I'm good. Beth, thank uh, you for uh, listening. Uh, thank you, Adam. Excuse me. Sorry, Adam. Um, one of the problems with phones. Uh, again, that uh, the bond investment earnings, and there was an issue of unclaimed property as well, the, uh, the, the uh, Budget Adjustment Act, we are in agreement on both. Uh, those are two items directly hitting the, uh, uh, the the treasurer's office, and we're fine with both. The, the bond investment, yeah, of, um, of 580, no, the treasury was, the unclaimed property was 580,000 in the bond investment. That is correct, that is correct. Thank you, Beth. Um, I wanted to move now, um, Beth, to um, a conversation that started in Ways and Means. It continued today in, in House Government Operations. And our committee has uh, looked very little at it, but are, are waiting to hear from you and from Legislative Council around the topic of municipal borrowing uh, due to um, uh, education payments that are, that are coming in at different times. Okay, so would you um, like me to start? Madam I would or? like you to start and then we have legislative council coming in to the theme. Uh, just okay. so that, uh, our committee understands it. And, and are we able to determine since some of those um, payments that are coming in are in uh, May and June, are we able to determine an, an amount uh, or estimate what we would need for an appropriation to do something like this to pay the interest? Okay, so uh, to answer that question in advance of the, of the rest, I think the answer is by May 15th, um, I think the Vermont League of Cities and Towns believes that we'll have an estimate. We've got kind of an outside number right now we're, we're, we're looking at, but uh, by May 15th, they believe they'll have a, a, a good sense of what's been paid as well as uh, the, the state, and we can, we can firm up a, a figure at that point in time. And so if something were to pass out of the House, we could use your estimate and then it could be trued up in the Senate? That makes sense to me. I'm just thinking of timing because that June 1st deadline is coming very quickly. Yeah, yeah. I would like to, to reserve uh, because I don't think Karen is on the call right now. And um, as I'm, I'm doing estimates, this is their bailiwick. Um, I would rather confer with them to uh, settle on that number but I can certainly give you my my best estimate for the for the time being, recognizing the league will be in a better position to answer that question. Thank you. So um, there is a PowerPoint, and I will point out that uh, unlike some of my 60 page PowerPoints, this is I believe 10 pages. So um, and we will make it uh, uh, relatively quick. Um, so 
starting on page two, and we've talked about this a little bit in terms of the Unifund borrowing that, uh, that we had. When the state needs to, to take a look at uh, cash flows, we start with um, our pooled cash accounting. And as, as Tom pointed out earlier, Tom Houston, that's something that the rating agencies see as a positive. Other states use similar models, uh, I believe Virginia, for instance. And uh, it, it allows us to uh, take care of the, uh, the, uh, the um, peaks and valleys in our cash flow. Um, in addition, to, and, and based on that, we, we are of the opinion that um, that we will get through 2020 without having um, uh, any need for any type of borrowing. That said, uh, we do have interfund borrowing of, of what we call restricted funds, special purpose funds, such as the workers' comp fund and so on, that we have already had authority to, um, to use at various points in the year, uh, there, uh, where, uh, for instance, uh, from June 15th to um, uh, July 15th. Uh, and uh, you folks uh, enacted a, uh, a change to that this year to allow us to have a, a 45 day window each, each side. So May 15th to August 15th, uh, that has been enacted and um, uh, signed by the governor and, and we're good to go on that. Uh, but that would be our first line of defense. Our second is a line of credit that you would go out if you needed that. And we don't anticipate needing this, but it's always nice to have a backup plan and a plan A, B and C here. And uh, that line of credit, we would we would work with our bank of record and and and, and do that if we needed it. Um, the advantage of the first one is that there's no cost to the taxpayer. The second one is a little bit more cost because you have to set up the line and then if you use it. And if you needed to go further, you could issue short-term debt. Uh, the state has not done any short-term debt since uh, 2003, 2004 fiscal year. It was September of that year. Um, I'm going to look it up. I can't remember if it was 46 or 48 million. I do remember it was from September to February, um, but it is uh, something that would be available to us if uh, if we needed it. Um, we um, towns have a similar structure, so go to page three. Uh, someone can move this PowerPoint along for me. I'm, uh, um, um, uh, you have it I, um, in front of you. I don't. And it says municipal options are similar yet different. Most towns, um, you know, are not in the same cash position, but uh, uh, some of the some of the towns may have some interim borrowing. But most, when they need borrowing, uh, when they do taxes, for instance, and they're waiting for that, it's not unusual for 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 uh, for communities uh, to go borrow through their local bank, um, and um, and that's a practice that already happens uh, because um, just like we do, they have um, peaks and valleys in their um, in their their cash flows. Um, banks have a good relationship with their partners, um, and banks have stepped up in 2011 with Hurricane Irene. Uh, they were great partners in working with uh, municipalities. An example I used this morning was a town of about 400 people, had a budget of about 800,000. I think it's up to a little over a million now. Um, and uh, they had $4.3 million worth of damage, and, um, and they were able to, to secure loans while they waited for their FEMA payments. Um, the bond bank is out there, but it's a different kind of um, of of, um, of um, process. There, uh, they they really work with infrastructure, and they're not in the short term um, borrowing uh, tax flow kind of market. Um, there's a there's a longer term piece that towns can use through um, through the community disaster loan. Um, it's a program through FEMA. It's going to take a while to get that up and running and, and across the country because they're used to having you know a localized disaster, and this is as Governing Magazine had a headline saying, this is a hurricane um, uh, uh, hurricane across the whole country. I think I heard a question. Should I stop or, or keep going? Um, I do not see a hand raised. Okay. Um, so, you know, as we're looking at this and you take a look at the education fund cash flow. So we made, um, this is page four, we made um, X68 payments on April 30th. So we're continuing to, to pay out our bills on time. Uh, and uh, 163.4 million. We have two payments in September 10th and December 10th. And uh, education payments come in from the towns that pay in. And that is um, uh, uh, the bills have gone out by the Agency of Education for June 1st. Uh, they total 88.76 million. And then the next due date is December. So looking at this, recognizing that you have, up, um, you know, in any given year, you have um, some um, peaks and valleys. We expect that municipalities are going to experience cash flows due to the impacts of um, uh, and delays or, or de and deferral of uh, receipt of property taxes. So if you go to page five, that's a little bit of where we were 
and uh, that has uh, changed somewhat as we move forward. This is something I uh, pulled out of the uh, 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 a previous report JFO sent to you. It was as of May 15th, uh, excuse me, March 15th. And uh, at that point, there was about $132 million uh, potentially out there uh, with 82 towns that still had some tax due dates. Um, I think Karen mentioned this morning something in the area of 50, 59, I believe. Uh, um, I'll let her speak to that if she's here or in a, in a uh, new period. But that's the money that would be if all of them were not paid. That's my understanding any event based on the JFO um, analysis. Uh, we expect that some portion of that will be paid. Um, but um, uh, that, that looks like kind of the outside number. So um, page six, I'm not going to spend any time on this. This was something that's been announced and people were asking me a lot of questions about it. And I usually don't put into a presentation something we're not going to use. But the feds create, created this municipal liquidity facility supposedly, well, I shouldn't say that. It will help a lot of communities. It's just not appropriate um, uh, for, for Vermont for two reasons. One, the population size associated with it. Uh, we could do uh, borrow on behalf of towns, but that creates another whole set of problems. And then if you see down at the bottom, the interest rate pricing, uh, the Federal Reserve recognizes this as a lender of last resort. So if you didn't have access to the markets for whatever reason, and they would add a premium onto the market rate, uh, penalty rate essentially. So this is not something we would want to look at, but it's out there in towns and cities are asking about it and others as well. And again, it will work in other communities and we appreciate what the Fed has done, but um, it, it's not something that would work for us. Um, our recommendation is on page seven and um, and that's the uh, the bill that you uh, that um, that uh, Becky will go through. But we would recommend that towns would borrow uh, through their local banks, through their established networks. Uh, they have working relationships with these banks and they've been good partners with each other. The interest payments, however, would be reimbursed by the state um, uh, to manage the cash flow effects of the property tax deferrals and receipt. It cannot be used to replace revenue. In other words, you can't use it um, as a long-term solution to um, uh, if you have um, uh, inadequate taxes, uh, just as we were talking about at the, at the state level, we can move those monies forward, but you know you can't move what you don't have. But this would allow for, in terms of the borrowing for those deferrals, um, it has to. We expect, uh, and our intent would be to recover these monies from the uh, uh, from the uh, relief fund, the CARES Act, um, and um, we we don't have a hundred percent guarantee on that. But the indications that we have, based on communications, particularly through NASBO um, and uh, the uh, the NGA National Gov Governors Association. Uh, with the Treasury, as well as uh, um, other sources, we believe that this would be a eligible expense based on the terms that are in that set, uh, uh, indent on that second um, bullet, the uh, short-term borrowing costs, the dates. Prior, the, these are these are established by um, by the CARES Act uh, prior to March. Um, uh, it it has, couldn't be in a budget before March 27th. It has to be within expense uh, expenditures incurred between March. Uh, first and December 30th, and must be consistent with the uh, the CARES Act. So we would we would recommend uh, that we that uh, we would um, let the communities do their short term borrowing, um, and um, and subsequent to that uh, would uh, would uh, seek um, interest um, uh, the uh, relief of the interest uh, for those borrowings uh, through. Um, to a fund that would be established um, by the, the um, by by the um, the language that uh, we're proposing, and that that fund would be administered by the treasurer's office. We would seek um, assurances through a um, through a um, application form that you comply with those three bullets, um, and uh, we would uh, uh, then then be able to disperse those funds. There's an appropriation in the bill for fiscal year 20. Oh, that's what we would be looking for. This type of fund does not have um, it's it's um, um, it would not um, uh, it would carry forward any appropriations into the next year. So if you appropriated dollars in fiscal year 20 for this purpose, it would move over to 21 as well uh, to uh, to cover those ongoing costs. We may need more than this down the road. Um, there's, you know, we don't know what the what the future is going to look like, but with June 1st coming on rather quickly, uh, we think that this is a a um, a good option. Um, it's a fair and reasonable option to assist communities, and uh, it sends a message also that uh, that we're in partnership with the with uh, with our, um, our our municipalities. And uh, I would urge um, um, 
adoption of this. And uh, the, the last two pages of this presentation are just about- Can I ask last a question time. first on this page, Beth, sure. before you yep. continue? Um, was this uh, was this page in particular part of your presentation today with the Government Ops Committee? Uh, it is. This was the same presentation. Okay. And, and I, so yeah. you've stated here, though, that how hopeful are you that the CARES Act will reimburse these do the, these dollars, the interest um, payment? Um, I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm very. My expectation is that they would. Uh, there's no 100% guarantee. There was some correspondence or actually a discussion between the NGA, NASBO, and the Treasury and, and the White House, actually. And a question related to this came up, and the answer was in, in the affirmative. So I think that we, you know, we don't have um, a final written guidance on this, but uh, we're fairly comfortable. I think we need to take the risk regardless. I mean, to be very mm -hmm. candid, uh, yeah. This is similar to the um, to uh, you know when we when the treasurer's office worked uh, with the administration to issue those checks, we you know and uh, you know we are taking some risk, but I think it's an appropriate risk, uh, measured, and it's the right thing to do. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I just want to make sure that the members of of the committee of jurisdiction did hear that it appears uh, at at your assessment thus far that the COVID dollars would backfill dollars used to for these interest payments yes uh, that is our, our our expectation but again there's no there i i want to be clear that there there is a risk involved in that yes i understand um, i'm going yes. to i'm going to skip the last three pages uh, those are related to the uh, community um disaster loan which we're working on as a longer term so that the municipalities have a continuum of options um mm -hmm. there's, there's still some work to be done on that and i will uh, in the interest of time, stop there. And I have one question. I have uh, uh, Mary Hooper. Thank you. The question that was asked in the Government Operations Committee about using the CARES Act to pay for this, I assumed was asking about to pay for the education payments, not the... Um, not the interest payments and and it's very clear isn't it that we cannot use the cares act to cover the cost of um revenue that was lost and the only reason is, yeah. yeah and sorry. this works sorry. because sorry. Yeah. yeah this works because it is for a, an expense that will be incurred after march 26th or 7th and so it's clear that it falls into an eligible pot. Is, is, that, is, uh, yeah. that is correct. Yeah. Um, it's uh, March 1st, actually. But the, if you look at the guidance that you just got the other day uh, from the, on the um, uh, Cor Coronavirus Relief Fund on the CARES Act, uh, uh, one of the lines, uh, it says, may funds be used, it's a Q&A, to uh, assist impacted um, property owners with the payment of their property taxes. And it's very clear that fund payments may not be used for government revenue replacement, um, including the provision of assistance to meet tax obligations. It can, however, be used because of an increase in expenditure uh, because of COVID. And the argument is that because, because of COVID and the delay, you have additional interest expenses, not revenue replacement. And that's, uh, and that's the, uh, the, 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 the conversations that we've had so far with, um, uh, with officials at, at the national level. Thank you, Beth. Mary, did you have a, a follow-up or are you set? Representative Townsend? Okay, uh, thank you. Um, uh, Treasurer Pierce. The, what sort, could you please address um, the needs that your office would have uh, to administer the program and where the costs, where the funds would come from to cover the costs for, for administering the program? Uh, yes, so we would, uh, uh, the, the, the uh, bill as we've, um, or language as, as we've uh, proposed and um, has been, um, when we propose, we propose that, uh, you know, that we're, we're finance type um, and uh, the, the, the ledge council makes it uh, into uh, the, the right language there. Uh, but um, uh, are you hearing me okay? Okay. 
Yes. Sort of. Slow down just um, a bit, Beth. I'm getting an echo too. I hope you can hear me. But um, um, the, uh, the 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 staffing for this was to come out of our office. Uh, we have a, a a position with someone with the skill set that could do this, and uh, we would seek reimbursement uh, from COVID to do this. Uh, it would add some strain to our to our office um, um, uh, functions, and we may need to to do some extra time on this. And this is a temporary yeah. position, and we would continue yeah, that position to uh, to um, uh, to to perform these functions. Uh, Beth, we may need just that written in a in an email that was garbled, and I think we there were some key words that we missed. Uh, uh, I'm I'm very sorry, uh, Representative. I I could not hear any of that. Um, uh, what I could do is try to put this phone on mute and then pick up uh, on 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 the uh, YouTube if that's helpful. But um, uh, I, I'm sorry, I could not hear the question. I hear some background noise. If, if you're not muted, uh, others might want to mute because I can hear some, like a radio or something on. Is that you're jazzing, Peter? Right. <laughs> um, we have a, a Why don't you like jazz? Uh, Maida, were you finished? Yeah, I have a, a, just a follow up question for the treasurer. So the, the funds to cover the the um the staff uh, person would that be coming still out having of the, I apologize. the overall fund that's um, in this oh, Meta? okay we're going to have um, to send well maybe if i just I, I could yeah i i will do that via email yeah we're going to have to send uh peter uh your question through Meta also um and we'll get a response from beth because we're, we're not she's not hearing us and it's not a clear um communication back uh, I'm going to apologize again. I can't hear it. I just tried the ad aggression uh, approach and moved around the uh, the room and still can't uh, can't hear you. Um, I I apologize. Um, I I just can't hear the question. Um, can you hear me, Beth? It's maybe perhaps somebody else might want to try to repeat the question if they've heard it. Can Can you hear me, Beth? Um, I cannot. No. Um, I think we've lost, um, okay, okay, try again. We are going to uh, have uh, Maida send the questions to you and then if we could get a response via email, if that works for you. Uh, yes, that'll, that'll be fine. If you send me by email, I will look at it right now and, and get back to you. I don't so, know if you uh, want Becky to start while I take a look at those. Yes, that would be great. And I have just a quick question that I, I for at least our committee, uh, if there's some estimate of an appropriation that would be needed at this time, did you have? Okay, I, yes, I did hear that. So let me see what I can do here for just a moment. So as I said, we're not going to know precisely to about May 15th uh, for for this, um, but I was taking a look at that 132 million dollars of uh, of um, of, uh, of uh, potential as of 315. And again, um, we expect that some of that will be collected. But if you took a look and just said, okay, there's $132 million. If that was at 2%, uh, which is a reasonable expectation in this, this market, um, and that was for a whole year, that would be $2.6 million roughly, or you know, for a half a year, about 1.3 million. So I think that's the outside range. Um, um, you know, Karen may see something that I don't, but I think that we're in that uh, um, two six range uh, would 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 uh, would be about what I would expect um, as as, um, as as an outside parameter. And again, um, uh, we we'll have to wait to see if May 15. It's possible that there was more from that three one to three fifteen period on uh, that's not reflected in that spreadsheet. Uh, that uh, that uh, that I received uh, received from JFO, um, and they did a great job on that. Um, I it's possible that there's more uh, um, um, cash flow issues from that period that aren't reflected in this. But that would be my my range right now would be someplace in that 2.6, uh, maybe a little higher. Let's say three million um, uh, and uh, or under. Could somebody do a thumbs up if they heard all that? Uh, we get the 2.6, the 2.6 we get. Okay. And Chip, okay. do you have a question? Perhaps she will hear your question. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll ask Beth. I was going to ask um, Maida to email it, but if Beth can hear me, um, 
I just I wonder is there any utility in um, doing the appropriation as an up to whatever amount? I mean the that that dollar amount would have to be encumbered until um, until those payments were made, but um, it just might be easier to get our hands on the money to use it for other purposes um, after those payments are made, rather than having to take it back from that fund that we established. Yeah, um, I think that's a good idea. And uh, uh, I did hear that question of most of it. I'm still a little static there, but um, uh, that so sounds to me like an approach that we could use uh, um, in, in that, that regard. So if you set up to 3 million now, the, the, the other piece is you're gonna be coming back and if it's not what we need, we can certainly sit down and, and take a look at that at that point in time. And to be very candid, um, you may look and say we need there's more need out there in different areas that we haven't um, uh, I haven't identified. For instance, this may be more protracted um, uh, cash flow issue for the uh, municipalities than this initial um, this initial piece. And you do have the option of of, um, of looking at that in um, in. As, as you move forward over the over the fall, but I think that's a that's an excellent idea. And Peter, thank you, and thank you, Beth. So, Beth, my question, um, I'm not sure if I heard you correctly. I wanted the clarification regarding what we can use COVID funds as far as covering the interest payments. I I agree. My reading, I agree. I think we can do that. Um, the municipal the municipalities are, that would take out loans to cover this, would we pay the interest on both the education property taxes? Yes. What about municipal property taxes that they might borrow funds for at the same time? Um, right now, this bill contemplates the, uh, the education taxes um, uh, only. Uh, okay. And uh, it's something you could certainly take a look at down the road, but that, that was the, um, uh, the piece that, um, uh, that uh, this bill is addressing, particularly with that June 1st deadline coming. Thank you. Okay, Maida, do you wanna try your question one more time? It seems like we have a connection and maybe we won't have to do email and then we will let Beth go and get Becky on. Okay, um, so um, Beth, the, the funds necessary to cover the staff um, who would be administering this program, um, would that um, money come from within the, this new special fund or would that be a separate amount of COVID money? We would expect that it would come from this fund. And I can't hear you. From within the fund, okay. Yes. With the can or special? cannot? It can. Yes, okay. With <laughs> point six. All, all of a sudden we have clarity again. Within the 2.6, Beth? Uh, yeah, uh, yes, again, tentative, um, uh, you know, I think I said, you know, maybe a, um, a little higher is, um, until, until we know uh, what, um, uh, what, what it looks like on May 15th. But yes, I think it's in that range. I mean, so we would be able to be absorbed in that. So that I'm Again, we may in in the in if we do it this committee bill the sum of X and I want to be really clear what are you recommending X be the number we put in this bill? Let's say two point seven million, um, and we'll take another look at it on May fifteenth. We may find that there's more need out there that we we haven't accounted for, or on the other side we might find it to be less. Okay, thank you. Two point seven million. And I think that, um, I, I don't remember and, who, but uh, someone made a suggestion of up to, and I think that's a great idea. Okay. Amada, did you have a follow-up? Yeah, just, a, 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 just a quick one on, on the same issue of the uh, treasury office, the treasurer's office staff. Um, I heard you say something about a temp position. Is that a, a full-time temp position? Is, is a full-time uh, yes, staff we have person? A position. Yeah, we have a position right now that's there, um, and uh, this and the the skill set to do this, um, and we uh, we'd like to continue with that. Right now, we're um, uh, you know we have seven people in treasury operations. We have more in retirement, more in investments, and so on. And uh, uh, at this is this could be a sizable workload, um, but we're going to make it work. 
and, and the workload would be going through the applications. Did I catch that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you look at that chart, it could be as many as um, 80 some odd applications. You know, we would need to take a look at the substantiation, um, uh, check out the interest rate and, and get get that work done um, and then implement this and get those dollars out to individual uh, to to individual municipalities. Got it. Thank you. We have one final question from uh, Bob Helm. Bob, your question. Bob, you have to unmute yourself, please. Forget it every time. Um, so can I go to something else? Uh, wait, um, so are we, it's not for Beth, right? What? Is it, is it for the treasurer? Yes, it's for the treasurer. Oh, absolutely, as long as it's for the treasurer, yes. Yeah, okay. Um, so if I'm out of line, Beth, I can tell me, but um, I was wondering, my understanding is you're reviewing Vermont State College's costs and that kind of thing, debt or whatever. Is that so? Uh, yes, I um, uh, was asked to uh, to take a look at it in a very limited way. I'm certainly not going to make any recommendations. I'm not an education specialist, but to take a look at uh, the the um, uh, the cost so that as, as the legislature is looking at uh, what this next year might look like with a, a low and a and, a, um, um, and a, a best case and a worst case scenario and what that cost might entail. And then you're going to be making decisions and doing other pieces and I would recommend a consultant. So we're going to be briefly involved. Uh, we've been working uh, with um, uh, the, the financial staff at, uh, at the, uh, the chancellor's office and we're going to be briefly involved to try to get a scope on those, uh, those dollars. And that's the extent of what we're going to be doing. And when will you expect to complete that? Uh, well, I'd like to have already finished, but I think in the next couple of weeks, um, we, we, will, we will hopefully get this done. Um, um, you know, people also have other schedules in, in the colleges and they're working on other pieces. And we will be talking to each of the some of the folks in each of the uh, individual, uh, each of the um, institutions as well. But two weeks, I'm hoping um, if, uh, you know, if it's, if it's uh, slips into three, um, but certainly no more than that. Well, and one more thing, will we be um, privy to that information as soon as it's made available? Or Absolutely. Does, okay. Um, well, I think it's pretty important not to make conclusive decisions with, but to give us maybe a little better idea of where they're at. Yeah. You know? yeah. Okay, thank um, you. I would agree. Uh, yep, thank you. I just wanted, uh, we have Becky Wasserman um, ringing the doorbell to come in and, and she's on a tight time schedule as you are. So I wanted to make sure we didn't, um, uh, we didn't um, uh, overuse your time and that she wasn't waiting for us. And Bob, we'll get a full update from the treasurer when, when that comes out, when that information. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Beth. Um, You're welcome. Let's see, do we have on Becky Wasserman? Are you with us? Yes, I, I'm here. Ah, there you are. <laughs> welcome, Becky, good to see you. Hi, how are you? Good, um, so we have heard uh, uh, briefly from Ways and Means that they that they support this um, uh, this municipal borrowing proposal, and I think it came. I know it came out of their committee on a straw vote of ten zero one. This after, this morning, I believe you were with Government Operations and walked through the bill, and they made a small technical change that you will talk about, and they voted um, this bill out uh, ten and a half. To zero, and the half was the concern about the CARES Act covering the uh, interest uh, payment, uh, the interest amount, and so that's why um, I was asking the treasurer about that page, and I've, I've been texting back to some members with that committee that it is the expectation of the treasurer that the interest payment will be care will be paid for by the CARES Act. Always a risk, but there's other educational payments that. Um, that I think we're getting confused when that vote was taken. Um, so 
Uh, welcome, Becky, and we look forward to a quick walkthrough of the bill. Uh, Lisa will put it on the screen. Some of you may have printed it off. Others of you have it on another device. Um, and I have the old one, Becky, so I don't know where you'll show us where government operations made a change from the. Um, sure. Um, and I, I can't tell in this draft yet, but I highlighted in yellow what I sent to Teresa where it was changed. So um, okay. it'll be easy to see. Okay, so uh, I, didn't, I didn't put up the highlighted one, but if you okay, can. then I can just I can just point it out when we get there. Okay. All right. Thank um, you. So uh, this this program is um, authorizing the state treasurer uh, to make to assist municipalities by um, assisting with the short term borrowing costs that uh, for the short term borrowings that are done to manage cash flow effects mm -hmm. from deferrals or delays in receipt of statewide education property tax that are a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. And it is um, named the Municipal Emergency Statewide Education Property Tax Borrowing Program. So subject section A of uh, section one just sets forth the intent of the program. Um, so uh, what I just described is, uh, is the, the intent of assisting municipalities for this purpose. And then um, the, the language after that, in, in sorry, there are no my numbers in this draft, I just realized. Um, the, the language starting on this program shall be administered in a way that is consistent with um, Section 5001 of the CARES Act. Um, so the, the, the reason for this is that the idea is that CARES Act funding would be used um, to reimburse this program. And so um, to the, you know, to the extent possible, the, the program will be administered in a, in a way that is consistent with the guidance and regulations that may be issued around that CARES Act funding um, and allows the state to recover to the maximum extent possible um, funding under the CARES Act. Um, and then there also is additional language that allows for um, the treasurer to recover funding from any other federal funds that may be granted to the state and used to reimburse short-term borrowing costs. So if there is another federal program, another bill that federal bill that allows for funding that could be used for this purpose, the treasurer would be able to also um, access that funding as well. Um, so subsection B. That is foolproof. That's foolproof language. We, I mean, that that will really work. Um, well, this is this is an intent section. Um, so I think the the understanding is that CARES Act funding would uh, this would be an eligible expense for CARES Act funding. So I think if there's another source of federal funds that come in, there would have to be an assessment done on whether those funds could could work for this program as well. I just want to make sure that by passing something that we don't uh, eliminate our opportunity to use federal dollars. Yeah, so the intent here is that um, if if there are federal dollars, we should be able to recover, we should recover those to the to the maximum extent possible. Okay. I, I'm sorry I interrupted. We'll let you get through the end. Oh, no, no problem. <laughs> the and so the definition section is subsection B. Um, and this is where there was a change made by House GovOps. Um, so short-term borrowing costs is defined as interest incurred for short-term borrowing directly attributable to the COVID-19 pandemic. And then there are some examples of short-term borrowing, including letters, uh, oops, I think we've, we've passed it, <laughs> letters or lines of credit, uh, revenue anticipation notes, tax anticipation notes, and bond anticipation notes. Um, so GovOps, uh, there was a question as to whether it was clear that those examples actually referred to short-term borrowings and not the, the cost of the borrowings. So they've included in front of, um, sorry, they've included after including um, interest on letters or lines of credit, revenue anticipation notes, um, so forth, to make it clear that it's not the the what's not being reimbursed is the the actual revenue anticipation notes, but just the interest on on whatever short term borrowing is done. Um, and then short term 
Oh, sorry, I'm still on page one. <laughs> Short-term borrowing um, does not mean in this definition principal payments of any borrowing or any interest on borrowing that's not directly attributable to COVID-19. Um, so we can go on to the page two. There is another definition for a municipality. And so municipality here means a city, town, or incorporated village. Subsection C establishes the program. Um, so the Municipal Emergency Statewide Education Property Tax Borrowing Program authorizes the treasurer to make payments to municipalities to cover these short-term borrowing costs that are incurred um, directly attributable to COVID-19. Uh, subsection D is an application process. A municipality that has duly authorized a short-term borrowing uh, may apply to the state treasurer for payment under the program. The treasurer uh, will prescribe the manner uh, of the application, but at a minimum, it shall include the following. Uh, first, there's the amount and type of short-term borrowing costs that the municipality seeks to have reimbursed. Second, the municipality's 2020 tax collection date um, third, there's uh, a requirement for an explanation with supporting documentation of the municipality's under collection or delay in statewide education property tax collection that's due to COVID-19. And then finally, certification by the municipality um, and including supporting documentation that the costs meet that definition of short-term borrowing that is in um, subsection B and that uh, it also meets the eligibility criteria that um, are set forth in subsection E, which we will get to next on the next page. I'm keeping track of members' names and we're going to do questions at the end, just so I'm, you don't think I'm avoiding and um, ignoring anyone. I have Maida and Bob so far. Okay, keep going, Rebecca, uh, Becky, please. Uh, sure, so the eligibility requirements, um, these, uh, the criteria here are trying to be consistent with the criteria for eligible expenses under the CARES Act. So first, the borrowing costs, um, the short-term borrowing costs were not included in the municipality's budget or any amendment to the budget enacted on or prior to March 27th of this year. Second, the short-term borrowing costs were incurred during the period beginning March 1st and ending on December 30th, 2020. Third, the borrowing has to be for the purpose of managing this cash flow issue of having a deferral or delay in collection of the statewide education property tax as a result of COVID-19. Um, the expenses um, in number four, the expenses have to be consistent um, with the use of funds authorized in the CARE Act as may be amended or the requirements of any other federal funds that may be granted to the state and used to support the program. And then finally, the, any borrowing interest must be commercially reasonable based on published municipal indices or prevailing bank rates. In terms of administration of a program, uh, the treasurer uh, is required to specify the form of certification to the municipalities not later than seven days after enactment of the act and can begin accepting applications not later than 10 days after enactment of the act. And subdivision two on the next page um, allows the treasurer to seek uh, reimbursement for any expenditures uh, made for administering the program. Subsection G uh, imposes a record keeping requirement on municipalities uh, to have records sufficient to demonstrate that the amount of payments to the municipality has been used in accordance uh, with the section. And then section two uh, moves on to the creation of the fund for which the payments uh, under the program will be made out of. So subsection A, a creates a, the Municipal Emergency Statewide Education Borrowing Fund, um, which is created under the special fund um, provisions in Title, 20, uh, Title 32 and administered by the state treasurer. Um, the money in the fund can only be used for two purposes. Um, that is to make these payments to municipalities under the program and for necessary costs incurred in administering the fund. Uh, the fund can consist of uh, any sums that are appropriated or transferred to it. In subsection C, the state treasurer 
may seek and accept any um, gifts, donations, and grants from any public or private source to be dedicated for the deposit in the fund. And subsection D relates to how interest um, earned on the fund will be handled. So it will, the, it will be credited back to the fund. And um, this is um, in part here because of uh, treasury guide, guidance on how um, CARES Act funding uh, interest that's earned, earned on CARES Act funding should be treated um, and used for eligible expenses that would be eligible under the CARES Act. So the idea is to keep that interest in this fund so it can be used for those eligible purposes. Section three is the appropriation um, for the fund. Uh, this this amount is, is left blank here, but the an amount is to be appropriated in FY 2020 to the fund for use in um, FY 20 and FY 21. And then section four is the effective date. So the act would take effect on passage. Okay, our, um, we do have a few questions. Uh, Maida uh, had a question and then Bob and then Peter. Okay, three very short questions. Um, Becky? Um, that this section 5001 of the CARES Act, I just want to double, double check that that's the section that contains the, um, the, the guidance, the, uh, the regulations as to proper usage of the money. So that's the section, yeah, the, that's the section for the coronavirus relief fund and that has some criteria in there and then the treasure, the treasury has issued additional guidance about how funds can be used um, after the act was passed. Um, and I believe there's been two, there's, the, there's been a guidance that came out. And then this week there was also um, some FAQs that were issued. Okay. Thank you. Uh, second question, there is reference to the tax collection date as part of what needs to be um, turned in from the municipalities. This would be in section uh, D. Section mm -hmm. one, sub D, um, and then number two under within that says the municipality's 2020 tax collection date. Does that mean, it, it, say in the instance of a municipality that may have deferred its collection date, does that mean the deferred date or the originally scheduled date or doesn't it matter? I think if it's, I think it's intending to be the date that the tax um, is is set to be collected. So if they deferred it, then it would be the date that it's deferred to. But um, that can certainly be clarified in the language. Um, well, personally, I think it would. I'm, I'm always on the side of clarity. <laughs> Wait, sorry, I'm. I think I'm confused. Um, I. This is for the state. The state property tax collection and I I need to look into into I, I know that there's some bills about um, deferring municipal property tax collection so I am not sure what the deferral rules are for the I know there's a June 1st collection date so I think I need to look into that okay Th thank you and then my last question in section 2 sub c that language about how the treasurer can solicit funds to go into this big fund from these various sources. Is that just boilerplate language that is added for any kind of special fund? Yeah, that, that's, um, that's language that just has uh, sort of a, a responsible person giving, given the authority to accept like a grant for the for the fund, um, we we do typically include something like that for special funds. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Maida, for that clarification. Bob, Bob, you need to unmute. Sorry, um, this happened way up in the beginning, and I um, was trying to write fast enough, but it blew out of my sight. And anyways, it's made a mention of the reason for borrowing has to be something like it has to be directly created by COVID-19. You, you recall that? 
Hello. Sorry, the are you are you asking where that language is? Well, I'm asking, yeah, where is that language? Did I read it correctly? And you actually read it. Sure. Um, so it there. Really went by fast. Um, in if I think it's in subsection C where the program is established. Yeah. See, I can't scroll anything. Um. So the uh, short-term borrowing cost has to be incurred um, directly attributable to the COVID-19 pandemic. Okay, that was it. So how do you, and, and I know this question has been asked a thousand times, how do you directly, directly attribute it to COVID-19 pandemic? I mean, how, what, where's the line drawn on that uh, as to it makes it or it doesn't? It, do I make sense? Yeah, I mean, I think the idea is that if a ta if uh, property tax owners are unable to pay their property tax because of a loss of income, then the municipality will not be able to collect the the amount that they are anticipating collecting by a certain time. Um, I don't. I don't know how you. I, I don't. That. I don't know how the. The treasurer might assess that. Um, I, perhaps she can speak to that. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm not gonna worry about it too much because it works both ways. I don't think either side could prove it. I mean, if you if you go out to the taxpayers, some are some are affordable of it and some are not. But anyways, okay. Appreciate it. Thank you, Becky. Thank you, Bob, uh, Peter, and then Mary and Chip. Thank you. And thank you, Becky, for coming in. So, Becky, uh, Section 1, Sub G, Records, please. Um, municipality shall keep records sufficient to prove this. Uh, I know that, uh, that audits will occur. Uh, audits, I know from CMS, are three years, uh, if not a little bit longer in the future for things occurring today. So I have no idea how long these audits might go for. Uh, my concern here is that if those records are not kept long enough at the municipal level such that they are destroyed, uh, and then if we are audited and need to prove something, we no longer have the records. Should we state in there a time frame for which they must keep the records? Um, that that might be helpful. Um, I, I don't know if the treasurer wants to weigh in on whether that... Um, would be a helpful change in administering the program. I know, I mean, under the, the CARES Act funding, the, uh, the money has to be used by the end of the year. And there is some oversight in the federal government about making sure that it's being used for an eligible expense. But I, I actually don't know what the timing on that would be if, if they considered this to be an, in, not eligible for those funds. Yeah, that's, that's a concern. And all I want to make sure is that we can prove that it is, uh, in fact, eligible three, four, five years down the road when they finally, they finally audit us. Go ahead, Beth. I think you're on. Okay. Um, do, you, do you want me to answer those questions at this point, Please. Madam Chair, or should I wait? Okay. So um, I think that uh, a couple of questions there. So one, in terms of uh, 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 what kind of documentation, for instance, if uh, a town generally will have some level of, of, of um, non-compliance um, with the deadlines on taxes. So for instance, they might have a, a lag of X percent over a period of time uh, and this thing exacerbated it, uh, the, the COVID um, uh, crisis uh, exacerbated it and it's over and above. So we would, we would look for some type of assessment like that. Uh, how long you keep the records is a good question. Um, We've been asking the uh, the federal government whether or not this is going to be, um, I think the term is the CDFA number, um, basically is it subject to the single audit? And uh, we're, we're still waiting to hear some answers on that. So I don't know what the record retention would be, uh, but we could certainly add into the application process itself um, uh, something um, in terms, of once we get a little more clarification, um, uh, what that documentation would look like. Or, or say something to the effect in the application that you need to keep it in terms of those timelines and then notify people uh, that they need to do that. It's unclear at the federal government level how they're treating these monies in terms of grant uh, versus payment, uh, other type of payment. And that uh, conversation is still happening with OMB and the U.S. Treasury Department and others. And we're, we're waiting for some guidance. In fact, we asked that very question of some folks yesterday. 
Well, I'm so, I'm satisfied personally, Beth, that if you're going to address the de the records retention piece uh, through the uh, through the application process, that's fine. Uh, Becky, one more question, if I may. In section three, the dates down at the very bottom, um, you've got uh, for use in an, and I reread the instructions while we were sitting here for the COVID, and it has to be incurred uh, during the time periods that we have indicated, uh, specifically uh, uh, 30 or whatever it is, 20 March through end of year 20, fiscal year into fiscal year 21. Um, the fact that we are that we have section three, it states for use in FY20 and FY2021, it could be a bit confusing. Someone might think that might cover the April interest that is incurred in April, uh, because that's still in FY2021. Uh, should we rephrase that to, to, um, to state through December, uh, end, you know, end of month, December? Um, yeah, that, that change could could clarify that. I think the intent there was that there is a, a June collection date that the, the, the municipalities have to pay the ed fund and then also in December. Yes. So it's possible that um, a municipality would uh, use this program for the December date, which is an FY21 rather for the June date. Um, sure. But it could be, uh, but the, Another point to make is that under the special fund rules in which this fund is created, um, the balance in the fund is carried over into the following year. So, you know, it's not it's not necessary to save for use in what years because the money, if it's not all, if it's appropriated in FY20 and it's not used in FY20, it will just be carried. The balance will be carried over to FY21. So this section relates just to uh, the treasurer's use of the uh, the funds and not to the municipalities incurring um, interest expense under this fund. Is that correct? That's correct. The, okay, the treasurer I'm, I'm can, okay. yeah, the treasurer can make payments okay, out of the I'm fund okay. in FY twenty and twenty one, but the okay. the the costs still have to meet the eligible expenses under the CARES Act in terms of when they're incurred and um, when the money is expended. I'm fine then, thank you. Thank you for that clarification, Becky, that was important. Um, Mary, your, uh, your question, please. So two questions. You define what municipalities are for the purpose of this fund. Are there any other entities that co collect property, that own property and would be collecting an education property tax? Um, I just wanna make sure that we're covering everybody. Um, so the original draft of this had a broader definition of municipality um, that's in Title I that includes um, school districts and fire yeah. districts. And I think it was raised in ways and means that there are some incorporated school districts that have taxing authority and could possibly um, borrow under this program if needed. Uh, ways and means decided to, to narrow it to just city, town, or incorporated village. Um, but I think that, I don't know the, the answer to the question if any other entity would um, would need to use this program, but I think that's that's a policy decision. Perhaps Karen Horn might be able to speak to that because um, I know she's been involved with this as well. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I do, it would be sad if we left somebody hanging out there who has an obligation that they can't meet. So if Karen, is on the line that would be interesting to know. Um, she, um, Mary, she had a, a one o'clock, um, okay. did another commitment, but she was going to try to join us before this was yes. over. And I yeah. texted Maria a while ago. And if she is on, um, we'll, we'll just hear from her yeah. for a couple of these questions. And I'm guessing we would have heard if, I mean, she, she was there through ways and means. And so I assume has this covered. Um, my other question has to do 
with the creation of a special fund. As everybody knows, I'm not fond of special funds. Um, in this instance, I understand the need to create one um, un unless the treasurer can tell us that there is a special fund that we could put this in and keep as a separate account. And associated with this, assuming that we are creating a new special fund, should we uh, put a sunset date on it since it is a very specific use that we're creating and um, make provisions to revert whatever may be remaining there at the, as of the sunset date. I know JFO and the administration oh. look for these monies and sweep them as appropriate, but why not make it automatic? Uh, Beth, are you still on? Uh, yes, um, I think that having a special fund is appropriate in this case, and I didn't see a place where it would um, be um, uh, a better match. Uh, with respect to, uh, to, to a, um, a date that this would um, sunset, I think that there may be some need going down the road um, uh, with uh, additional um, uh, uh, additional need with communities and, and, and depending on how things work their way through in 2021. Um, and uh, uh, I would recommend leaving it now uh, at this point because you're gonna come back in the fall and reassess uh, where we are with this and whether or not you wanna make any other provisions. We could put a date out in, in you know, for a year or two, Beth. Uh, just so it comes back to our uh, awareness and it just doesn't hang out there mm -hmm. as a special fund. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Now, the, the point I would make, however, is that any of the monies that we do receive through the uh, CARES Act need to be expended by December 30th. Mm -hmm. And uh, another question we've asked and we're seeking clarification on is what does incurred mean? Does it mean if you have a contract as of June uh, 29, um, December 29th versus you must have all the dollars out the door by December 30th. And we're seeking clarification from the federal government on that as well. So uh, unless there is a concern about this, I would like to propose that we put a sunset date on it that could be for all I care, five years out. Um, just as the chair noted, so that it does come back to us. You, you, you all know how we are in, in 10 or 15 years, we're gonna be wondering why in the world is this there and why didn't we take care of it? Mary, in 10 or 15 years, you and I are not gonna be wondering. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else is going to be wondering what we're they were thinking. Them wondering. Yeah. Um, so, so Beth, do you have a recommendation for a date for a sunset that would um, that would? Um, How about the the end of uh, June June thirtieth, uh, two thousand and um, uh, uh, twenty one? At the so end, of it would, it would next fiscal yeah, year. Yeah, it would sunset at that point. Yes, yeah, so, and then we would uh, 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 do the books based on that. So, and close it out. <laughs> and and you can be comfortable with that, Beth. Uh, yes, again, you may want to look and say, gee, uh, they, you need to do a little bit more and you can push it out, but okay. I, that's, I think that's fine. I think that's Thank an appropriate you. way to do it. And okay. I won't be here in 10 years to look at it either. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, so just to clarify, would that be a sunset on the fund or the program as well with the idea that at, at, by the time June 21 rolls around, um, the, the program will no longer be needed. I, I would assume both. Fund. Okay. I would assume the fund, again, I apologize if I, um, but I think it's the fund, you know, the, the eligibility is gonna be determined by the federal government, whether they plan on expand, expanding this or there are other federal aid, but I would assume it would be on the fund at this point in time. Okay, and before we make that, I would just need a show of hands from committee members on a couple of things. So um, we'll, we'll do a show of hands um, when we when we look at a couple of the other changes that were also uh, recommended. Um, Mary, were you have are you finished? Uh, Chip, your hand was up. Uh, yeah, I have a, a couple of just brief questions, but I think I'll muddy the water on this issue before I do that. Um, 
So the only things that are eligible for this program are the expenses incurred um, between March 1st and December 30th. It's, it's already by that a, sort of a disappearing um, program. Um, you know, once, once those expenses have been covered to the degree they can be, the thing disappears. I mean, we might have to go back and, and change the, um, you know, remove it from the books, but, it, but it, it will cease to exist for all practical purposes. If, as Beth says, we, want, we might, might need it again later, we're going to either have to resurrect it by changing those dates or just create a new version of it. Um, so when we get to it, I'll, I'll be arguing that it doesn't need a sunset. But um, before that, uh, my questions um, for Becky. Um, and the section D, the application that says the municipality that is duly authorized a short term borrowing, um, is that clear in these days of? of a new world, what it means to have duly authorized short-term borrowing? Has it changed at all from our, our previous life? And um, is it gonna be clear to the municipalities what that means? Um, I think I need to check to see if there have been any changes in how that can be authorized. Uh, my understanding was that it is, it should be the same as it has been, but um, I can I can just double check on that. Okay, uh, and the other question is um, uh, later in section D, both three and four um, uh, for part of the application require supporting documentation. Um, later in F1, it says the treasurer shall specify the form of certification to the municipalities. Will that, will that um, specification by the treasurer cover those what's needed in the supporting documentation? I think that was the intent, um, unless the treasurer has anything to add to that. But I think the intent was that um, the treasurer would be sort of prescribing what the certification and application process would look like. And, okay, I just want to make sure the municipalities know what they'll need to provide. But thank you. And Peter and Bob, I think your hands were up from before, unless there's a question. Um, we are in un unusual times and we need to move this bill very quickly and we do not have the ability to go out in the hall and chat with people to get information and then bring it back into the committee room. So I have asked um, uh, Karen Horn from the Vermont Leagues, League of Cities and Towns to weigh in on, um, Mary, you had a question regarding is anyone being left out? And so Karen, are, are, would you mind responding to a couple of questions that the committee has? I'd be happy to. Karen Horn for the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. Thank you, Karen. Mary, do you want to ask your question, please? Yeah, Karen, this is a narrow definition of municipalities, which makes sense. And I was wondering, however, if there is some other taxing entity uh, responsible for paying property taxes that may need to have the same sort of shelter that we're providing here for towns. I can't think what it would be, but I just wanted to double check. So the um, this piece of legislation only addresses bar, um, municipalities that are collecting education property taxes and then needing to remit them to the state. Um, and so uh, the only entities that actually collect education property taxes are the cities, the towns, and the villages. It's pretty narrowly uh, written. Okay, so no one else collects education property taxes except for those entities that we've described here. Yes. Great, thanks. And Maida, is your question for Karen? Uh, yes, it is. Go ahead, Maida. May I? Is it okay? Please. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, Karen, um, from the league's perspective, under the um, information to be included in the application, the second thing on the list is the municipality's 2020 tax collection date. Um, how do you define that? Well, the um, 
We actually have a list of all the municipal uh, tax due dates, uh, towns in the state. And um, so it would be the uh, tax due dates that have been established in that community. I can actually send that list to the committee if you'd like. But what we're really looking at are towns that had due dates um, after the beginning of this COVID-19 crisis, because those are the towns that are experiencing um, difficulty as a result of this crisis. And, and again, the bill is limited so that it's only addressing that piece of unpaid education property taxes. Thank you very much, I understand, thanks. Are there any, uh, may, uh, Marty? Is this question for Karen? I recall a bill, I recall a bill that we passed through the house just last week in which we gave towns the ability to defer the tax day, receiving taxes from their citizens they, they had the ability to defer that tax date. It did not allow them to defer the time that they had to pay it to the state, however, but it did have a deferred tax date from their citizens. And wouldn't we want to include that here as well? Because if, if for instance, if they asked their citizens to pay the education tax by May 1, and due to complications right now, they might say, okay, you don't have to pay your education taxes to us until August 1 that's a, a deferred tax date, wouldn't we want to include both of those dates here? Isn't it just the municipal portion that we allowed them to do, not the state education fees? What, I think we allowed them to defer the date on both days, but we didn't allow them to defer paying it to the states. Yes. Yeah. But they could is... defer when their citizens had to pay it. Yeah, this is Karen Horn. So you did pass legislation that allowed the town to defer tax due dates on both the education and the municipal tax side. Um, it did not change, your, your right representative, it did not change the due date for towns having to make the education fund whole. Right. And this um, legislation would allow them to borrow um, in anticipation of those taxes coming in, mm -hmm. the state will pay the interest right. that's um, due because of that borrowing. And the mm -hmm. treasurer may have a comment on this as well if she's still here. Uh, Beth? If, I may, if I may, Madam Chair, I think that, uh, yes, we're looking for the, the date, but we would also ask in, in, the, in the explanation of why, why you need it if there was a, for instance, that you deferred the date from May, um, April 15th to, to May 15th, uh, that would be something that we would see in the application itself. Okay. But the, the reason okay. that we wanted to ask that other question of what's the date, because this, getting to Karen's point earlier, this would only really apply to people that had tax dates after um, after March 1st, uh, mm -hmm. because if you had a tax date of, um, of, uh, of January 20th, for instance, I'm just picking a date off the top of my head, um, you, you would not be uh, adversely impacted by the, uh, the COVID. Marty, does okay. that your question? Okay. Yes, I mean, if, if the town had a date of of May 1 and then they decided because things are difficult locally to extend it till June 15th, they could still apply for these funds. I mean, it, and then if they have to go out and borrow, then they could apply for these funds. And I think the tax collection date would probably, they would probably call it the deferred date because they had officially deferred it, but it was still after the other date beginning in the COVID problem. Okay. Okay, and, and the risk is the same as the regular collection dates. If people pay their property taxes or not, there's still a risk that they may borrow um, what the need is, but all those taxes don't come in, but that happens in towns anyway. All the time, yeah. Uh, Dave. Is there an estimate from anyone on what the appropriation amount should be? 
We got one from the treasurer earlier at two point seven. We're going up to two point seven, but March, not March, May fifteen would have a better amount. And Karen, you might. That's right. Thank you. To speak to this and that an adjustment could be made on the Senate side or in the skinny, you know, we could also put it in the quarter year bill. So Karen, does that number, you know what the towns, um, what, what it's like in towns, the treasurer suggested 2.7 million and we had a suggestion to write up to 2.7 and then uh, let the Senate. I, I do think, oh, sorry. No, I'm fine, go ahead. Uh, I do think that we will have a much better idea on May 15th, the number of towns have their final um, payment on May 15th. And, and to the earlier question, we do have some towns that are deferring tax due dates. We have a lot of towns that are not because they don't feel they can at this point. So on, on May 15th or May 16th, most likely, I think we'll have a better idea of what the need is going to be. Yeah. Madam, Madam Chair, may I ask a question of, of, of Karen? Yes. So Karen, what I did just to try to get a thumbnail on this is I took the 132 million that was off of that 315 report and I multiplied by 2% and added just a little bit of, of room. Is that a reasonable process at this point in time uh, or do you have a better suggestion for the committee? Um, I think that's a reasonable process. I think that you might want to go for like 5% instead. Um, although it's, um, I'm not a mathematician, but um, mo most of this year's taxes have been paid. So the, um, have been collected, excuse me. And so the amount that is going to be delinquent or not available to provide to the education fund is is definitely low, but I, I think it you know it's sort of an estimate at this point, and it's what you're comfortable with, treasurer or committee. On to that, Beth, what the percentage is that you're comfortable using that we would reflect in this. Room. Are you doing the calculation, Beth? My apologies, I had you on mute. Um, oh. I would assume that the 132 million, actually some portion of that, uh, and Karen is correct, would be paid. Uh, so I, that's a high number. When I've talked to the banks recently, I'm hearing numbers between one and a half and 2%. Um, it might be a little higher, but I think it's offset on the other. I'm comfortable with this as a ballpark unless Karen says, boy, I've got some other information and, you know, and um, this is nowhere near, near, near the range I was thinking. Um, and again, we can correct it on May 15th, but that was the reason behind it. The 132 million that was potentially outstanding, recognizing that some portion will not be, and then just a rate in that ballpark at the moment. We could certainly increase that rate to, for instance, if I increased it to 2.5%, uh, we'd be talking, um, uh, 3.3 million. But the other piece too is that's for a whole year. And I actually think that these will be less than that someplace. If you did this at six, um, uh, six months, for instance, it would be 1.6. So I think 2.7 is a comfortable number until we get to uh, uh, a week from now or so. Thank you, Beth. Marty, your hand is up. Was that from before or do you have another question? You're good. Any other final questions um, on this bill? And this is fully supported by the Vermont League of Cities and Towns who have been working with, with um, communities across the state. Karen, is I can- Yes, yes, we, we're very grateful to the legislature for taking this up. It's, it's gonna be very helpful. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mary, you have one question? No, I don't have a question. I just want, I had raised the issue of sunsetting this and are, are we going to have a conversation about we that? Are, because we are, I think we can have okay. that. And, and we, I know everyone else is busy. So the treasurer, I, okay. I think that uh, she gave a date out that we could talk about sunsetting. And um, there's uh, four pieces that we just need to make sure with Becky that we have a final copy of, uh, of this bill. 
I'm assuming, and I should never assume, but if I could just have a raise of hands of how many committee members would support such a committee bill being explored further, would you raise your hand? And I'm, I'm counting with my fingers. One, two, three, four, five, five, six. <laughs> okay, seven, I have a, we have a majority. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Karen, for joining us. Uh, Beth, it's always nice to have you here. Thank you for coming. Thank My you. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Um, so um, let's um, let's see what time. It's three o three. Do we have a few more minutes? Are you guys okay to to work on this just for a bit more? Um, Becky, the first piece that uh, we need to see in a final copy is what Dub Ops on page one, section one, small letter B, number one to put in interest on letters. So we don't have that in our in ours, but uh, we would need to see that. <coughs> and the second one was, was what Maida brought up in section one, small letter D, number two, the date clarification language. You haven't already done this, have you, Becky? Have I already done this? Yeah. You no, haven't I just I have the GovOps change. Oh, okay. I don't have um what was just discussed. Okay, so Maida, it, it's on that number two, uh, D2, that we would make that clarification. Um, the, the so that clarification would be to say the, the deferral, the collection and any deferral date? Maida, um, can you weigh in on this? This is your I think I think that's what was shared in the conversation by the by the treasurer and by Karen. That was my understanding that in the application process, the, the original date could be there, but if they deferred the deferral date also. So you don't want to change it here, or you do, Maida? Well, I, I haven't personally. I have an understanding now of what is meant but I did not have that understanding just looking at the words as they are currently on the page. And so what would you like it to be, Maida? What's your recommendation? Uh, goodness gracious. Um, all right, just to do a knee jerk thing for, for to, to move this along a little bit, uh, feel free to attack me, okay? Uh, the municipality's 2020 tax collection date as originally scheduled or deferred or to the, to the uh, deferred originally or deferred date. How about putting I both? Think, I, I don't think we want or deferred date. I think what they want to make sure is yeah. that, that the original collection date falls within the time period for which it would be allowable. Correct. And Beth said that in the application, she's, she's going to have to send out um, specify the form of certification to the municipalities. She said she would make clear to them that she would like in that section that she would like um, both the, this date and the and any deferral date. Yeah. So, so, so that would cover it not, there. So we do I, not need to change this. We can trust the application process to yes. manage it. And if, if a question about this comes up on the floor, when we ever get to that point, we know what this means and how it'll be covered in the big picture. Yeah. So everyone is comfortable with leaving uh, D2 as it is and that it would be addressed in the application process. Can I have yes. a thumbs up or a hand for people just so I'm seeing that we're okay with Okay, I have a majority. The next piece um, was, uh, I'm gonna do the 10 cent last. I wanna talk about the money. Beth was pretty clear on the 2.7 million. Um, how are committees feeling about, uh, I believe it was, we were going to uh, consider up to 2.7 million. How do committee members feel about that? Um, yeah. I. I I have to say, I think that's a very generous amount given the, the, the um, discussion we heard both by Karen and by Beth about how that was arrived at. So I would, I, I think it's more important to put up to in there, but um, I think that's a fine number. I can't imagine that I'm exceeding that. Okay. Any other? Um, oh, 
Uh, oh, wait, I do have some hands up. Dave, you have a hand up? Yes, I do. Uh, okay. I agree with Chip. It's, uh, I mean, it's based on the full 132 million and I just don't see that happening because the more money we tie up to this, it's not going to be spent uh, on other causes that are perhaps uh, equally, if not more important. But to Chip's point, uh, said it better than I did. Okay, um, Maida? So um, th this amount is to cover the interest payments to the municipalities, as well as the payments to the treasurer's office for the administration of the program. And um, come May 15th, um, ne next week, is that next week? Yeah, that's next yes. week. Um, there'd be a clearer picture as to what the amount is and it can be changed then. Is, 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 right, was that right. not yes. suggested? It could be addressed in the Senate side once, the, once there is a, a number. I, my screen just froze. Or Maida, your free those. Yeah, things just can't. Oh, I need to lower my hand. No, it's lower. Okay, okay Peter? Just a, a point. If we put two point, and I'm fine putting 2.7 in there right now, and I know the Senate will adjust it based upon a little, little, uh, little more information at that point in time. But if we put $2 million in there, $2.7 million in there, and 1 million remains unexpended and unallocated, based upon nothing incurred towards it on the end of the year, it has to be returned to the US Treasury. Just, you know, we're gonna need to watch that mm -hmm. and we may wanna actually put something into the, uh, into the skinny budget that actually addresses that. So I'm gonna but ask not, it. Not in this bill though, Peter, right? Uh, no, not in this bill. Let's not, you know, let's get this thing moving. Um, and if Maria could maybe make no. a note. And, Excuse me? If Maria could maybe make a note to remind us that we need to, uh, you know, we'll need to remember that. Okay. Thank you. I have Marty and Chip. I, I would disagree with you, Peter. I think what we're doing here, aren't we appropriating general fund money, 2.7 million? And COVID. then we will seek reimbursement as necessary. We're going to seek but reimbursement. But that'll be general fund money left over. Okay. I, yes, if we do it so, that way, we're fine. We're allocating I, I general fund money we don't have, but we're, we're, we're okay. You know, we can do it that way and we'll, we'll be fine. Becky, you need to jump into. Um, yeah, so this, the, the treasurer did, um, and, and you might want to seek clarification from her, but I, I do recall that she, she testified to the fact that we there there would be an appropriation first, and then uh, we'd be, we'd be seeking to reimburse that with um, CARES Act funding or any other federal funding that could support that the program. Okay. She clearly stated she thought it would be reimbursable, but there's always a risk. She, I wrote okay. down the risk. Yeah. Right. Okay. Marty. Okay. That's it. It's a it's okay. a general fund appropriation. Yes. And then we will seek recovery. Right. Okay. Uh, Dave and Mary. Yes. So now I'm more concerned. You're you're saying we're going to have to um, commit uh, several million dollars that may or may not be used in general fund at a time when we're hemorrhaging general fund elsewhere with needs. We can't appropriate this to the federal COVID fund. Wouldn't that give us more flexibility and then just draw it down as we need it? Why would we tie up resources at such a critical time? Not arguing, just asking. Well, I think that the resources um, could be made available uh, for this very short period, if need be. Um, we, we, we have the resources that we could find for a short period of time within our reserves to, to do this. Um, I, I shouldn't have had the treasurer come off the line so fast, and, but we need the approval process of the COVID-19 dollars and we need the money to go out for, uh, well, we have, we have the dollars with COVID, but we, we don't have the approval of it. And I don't know if we can get Beth back because I can't answer that question um, because we have to make absolutely sure that the dollars do work for reimbursement. 
And, but then, then, then I see your point. Is this um, a priority if, if it's not, if they're not reimbursable? Is that your, Dave, is that your, your um, Yeah, I, I, I hate to just uh, tie up, tie up cash at a time when it's very precious, general fund cash, that's all. I don't see why we can't, you, you know, uh, housing and uh, government ops voted 10 and a half to nothing, you know, in the belief that this was a permissible expense. Why not just book it to a federal line item and then pay it from there? Because if it's, if it's an inappropriate expense, if down the road, it has to be reconciled, then it has to be reconciled. I have Steve, just, Steve Klein is um, he is on this um, he's on this Zoom meeting. Steve, is that something you can weigh in on? Yeah, I mean, I I tend to agree. I think you can appropriate it out of the uh, CRF money, and then the worst case is we would at some point down the road have to, it would be disallowed, and we'd have to repay it, which I don't think is happening. I tend to agree it's very eligible, um, and so I don't see why we wouldn't. Uh, and this is part of the list of things that we can appropriate. You can either put the bill out and give them the authority to do it and put the appropriation in your bill or just add to it and say appropriating CRF fund, you know, whatever the amount is out of the CRF fund. Um, so I would, I mean, I, we can talk to Beth about it, but that would be my, my sense also. Okay. Um, that's something that we really need to have uh, clarified by tomorrow morning just so that we can get this bill out. I was hoping we could perhaps get it out tonight but yeah. uh, that would be a, a big piece that we need clarification on. Um, I'll try to reach her, but I I, my, I tend to uh, think that this is very, very usable um, okay. for the fund. But I'll, I'll uh, thank, thank you. Um, there's somebody the poll. We have the treasurer coming back on. Right yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, treasurer appears. We let you go too soon. Mr. Pierce, you're muted. Unmuted. Hi, Beth. I unmuted. How are you? Yes. Hi, Beth, we've come across a stumbling block just as soon as we let you go. Um, Dave yes. Yacchimoni and Marty and others have brought up um, an interesting question. First, that these general funds that would be reimbursed by CARES dollars the question is, the CARES dollars are here and in the bank. Can we use the CARES dollars now instead of substituting them later? Um, I think the answer, you can do it both ways. I think that one way to do it would just to be appropriate the money because again, there is that, that possibility that it's not eligible uh, and get a better tune on the money. I get your point. I, you know, When I gave that 2.7, that's the high end. <laughs> And at least I believe it's the high end. Um, and I'd be interested in seeing what uh, um, uh, happens after the, the league has been able to weigh in on that next week. Um, or, you know, if, if Steve thinks, I, just, I was just listening to, to this um, uh, uh, discussion, uh, which is why I logged it, uh, called back as quickly as I could. Um, I, I'm okay with Steve's approach as well. Okay. Uh, I would just say, you, can, you know, we're not going to know for a long time whether or not this money is going to be, I mean, we're going to assume it's eligible. Right. Um, right. Somebody might come yep. back. It's going to be years. Yeah. Yep. Okay, use, so Steve, use COVID. Steve, is your recommendation then directly use the CARES dollars for this? Yeah, and we would just appropriate it out of the uh, CRF funds um, rather than the general fund. And, and then we would reflect it in our BAA in that CARES section. Yeah, or, yeah. We would just note it, yeah. Uh, Maida? So, yeah. So, I was going to ask if this does not fall within that framework, which you folks on joint fiscal adopted the other day, you know, where there's that big bulk of COVID money subject to appropriations from the legislative process or through the legislative process. So, and here we I are. I guess, in my own way, I'm like, he was saying, it seems to me that we're exercising that uh, uh, that possibility here. Yep. And, and 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 this is our this is the, the first appropriation that's come before, and, and it sounds like it would apply. Uh, Mary and Kimberly.
I like what we're deciding to do. Um, I'm a little confused how you appropriate up to. I mean, I, I'm assuming that means we're going to set aside 2.7 million, and which ties up money that could have been used. So, how do we think about that? And maybe Steve could help us. Well, with the only, I, I was just going to weigh in quickly, Steve. You can unmute yourself. The the two point the one point two five billion dollars. This small amount's not going to tie up much because I don't think we would have it all out the door until into the fall. And yeah, I think that's right. And you'll have another chance okay. in in August to yeah. change the number. So either way, you know, it's it's uh, yeah, yeah. And that makes sense. Thank you, Kimberly. Yeah, I I think I get it. I just had a clarification along the lines of Meta that this would fall into tranche three in terms of the tiered joint fiscal, and we and it would book in at such a low amount compared to the rest of the pot of money that remains in tranche three that it's not a concern. Unlike tranche one, and I don't know where things stand currently with tranche two. Right, there's nothing out of uh, the second one yet, and proposals for the. Um, the administration will see the excess receipts for the first one, but there's nothing out of that I know of out of two or three. You don't agree, Mary? No, I'm just amused that we're saying, oh, it's only 2.7, you know, it's no big deal. <laughs> it's like, think about how we fight over I know, you know. over 50,000. Yeah. Okay, so um, Ten. let me get <laughs> 10,000. Let me get a read from the committee. If the committee, you have two choices, either you would like to use general fund and have it reimbursed, or you would like to um, use the CRF money right away. How many of you want to use general fund and reimburse? If I could see a hand, please. A wave of a hand. I don't see any. How many of you prefer the second method using the CRF money? Okay, I either got blue hands or other hands. So. Uh, Becky, so we'll change the language at the end, and, our, and we're agreeing that it would still remain up to because we can make the adjustment um, in the skinny bill or in the bill in September. All right, that takes care of those pieces. The last piece was the sunset date, and um, Mary, I, I have I, I have to say I have some sympathy. I want to go into those special funds and get rid of a whole bunch of them. Um, but Chip, uh, you also raised a good point. Um, the, the program ends, but the special fund could hang out forever. So um, do you want to talk a little bit more about, Chip, why we wouldn't get rid of the special fund? You know, um, I, I mean, ultimately, I, I absolutely want to see, like everyone, see the special fund go away. Um, I, I guess, I, you know, I, I guess I don't have a strong feeling about it. I mean, I think this this is self-limited in in the actual um, effective time of the program, um, and if we and therefore if we want to put a well. So I guess I'm not clear then what Beth is saying about how we might need to use it again, unless she means for next year's taxes, because um, by the time this is the eligible time period and this elapses, um, municipalities would have taken care of the, that deferment, the possible deferment of um, property taxes. So is she saying we might need to use this again in the following year? She is still on the yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't, the thing is that I take it one year at a time. This money can only be used for, CRF money can only be used for December 31st. So I would do this as a one year event. And then somebody, if, if you decide next year that you have to do a similar program, unless something changes, you'll be, um, we'll be funding it a different way. Okay. Uh, I, so I'm, I'm going to drop my objection and, and agree with Mary. Let's get rid of this thing after it's done. Beth, did you need to weigh in? Would you like to weigh in? Um, I'm, I'm fine with uh, that decision. I think the one thing I'd point out is the definition of encourage is still in flux with um, 
with the with the guidance. Uh, so again, you might you might have a bill that uh, was incurred on December 29th, and it takes to April 2nd or 3rd to pay it. Um, or does the money have to go out all by December 31st, cash out the door? And that's a question we're still trying to seek clarification on. So I think having it out to June 30th is a good move, and sun sunsetting it is just fine with me. Thank you, Beth. So if I could just see a raise of hands, how many of you are um, would support a sunset on the fund? Um, on June 30th, 2021, would you raise a hand or a blue hand or any kind of hand? Linda, what are you thinking? Okay, I'm just looking for hands. I see Maria's hands, but that's all I see. <laughs> okay, I think we have a, a unanimous uh, there. So, um, so my next question is, Becky, how long would it take to make these changes? And is it too late in the day to get it to the clerk's office anyway? Do you know? I think I can make these changes pretty quickly. Um, I just have to, I, 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 I sent an email um, during this call to our drafting operations team to see if they could open this as a committee bill. Um, so if I can, I think they would just have to do another once over of it. Um, I don't, I, to the answer, to the question of the clerk's office, I don't know what time they are available until. Teresa, can you give a quick call to the clerk's office to see if it, if it doesn't matter, we could come back tomorrow morning and do it? I, I, I will email that. I will email Bill McGill. Okay. Um, and I, I think that that uh, completes the bill. Is there anything anyone thinks that we have missed? We'll do the money up to change it to CRF money, put a sunset in. We're going to leave that date clarification and we'll make sure that the interest on those two words are in from the GovOps committee. Would okay. you like me to sign off so I can start that getting that done? And and Teresa okay. will text you uh, or email you if it's okay. tomorrow. Representative Toll, can I, before we get, I just happened to think this is a committee bill. Yes. So it's Nadine and not Bill McGill. Oh, I don't know that. So he doesn't normally do the committee bills. It has to go through uh, drafting ops first. Okay, well, <laughs> if they can accept the bill, if they can accept the committee bill just today. I will I will email them both simultaneously, but I believe that's the process, not Bill okay. yet. Nadine okay. first, but I won't get back to you on that. And then, um, so while, while we're just waiting for uh, a, an email to come back, I'm just looking for my agenda. I know I had an agenda around here somewhere. God, I organized myself and now I can't find my agenda. Look um, under your dog. Thank God I'll I'll find it for you. Morning. <laughs> no, I've got to have it. I'm convinced that I'm organized now. Tomorrow morning we're going to have Adam Gresham back in to talk about uh, the language, uh, the 50,000 and the more inclusive date. And um, he will be Sarah in Clark is on at 8 30 first. Yep. And Adam will be in, uh, at 9.30. And um, Sarah Clark is coming in and she's going to talk about uh, the COVID-19 tracker and, and really focus in the, the, a large majority of these are within AHS and, and to talk about expenses that they have incurred and, and expenses that they are tracking. And she did a presentation for, I think, Senate Health and Welfare and she was updating it and tweaking it for us. So that will be at 8.30 tomorrow. And then Adam will be at 9.30 to go over the language. And then um, I'm not sure after we hear from Adam if Steve has any availability or Maria, were there any pieces um, you and Steve were going to weigh in on? I think. Uh, we had asked for legislative council to weigh in on the language after Adam is presented, but does that need to wait until Monday or can we do that tomorrow? 
So you had asked about the um, fifty thousand dollar that language that Adam's going to talk about, and I think I had um, communicated with Steve, um, asking him what his thoughts were on it. So mm -hmm. he's on right now. He might want to just um, let you know what his availability is. Steve, did you follow the conversation? I I know that when you're muted, you're doing three other things at the same time. Are you there, Steve? He's physically behind that name, but he's not with us. Okay, so so we'll uh, we'll ask him and get him on tomorrow because he may have some thoughts on that. I just I didn't want to answer before I you know yeah. talk to him. And um, and also um, if he's not available on Friday, we can we can do this Monday. So okay. while I'm just waiting to hear back from uh, Teresa on that email. Um, I just want to, we, we still need uh, a little more time with the uh, clean water uh, fund because we need to hear back from the uh, committee of jurisdiction. Marty, you haven't heard back, have you, from Amy Sheldon? Amy listened into our YouTube this morning and she passed along the, um, the spreadsheet that Julie gave us. And she was going to send her. She was going to send that to her committee with comments and ask them to reply by tomorrow if they had questions. Or if they, but she said she would reply by tomorrow afternoon on behalf of the committee. But um, I can ask her if she can do it earlier if you want to. Okay, thank you. Um, whatever, whenever you get the update, we would take it. I'm I'm just going to um, make notes um, on my sheet. Uh, using the enhanced FMAP money to bring us to closure. Is there um, anyone that uh, um, I need to know if, if that's going to be an acceptable use for uh, committee members? Um, I, I just wanna go through the adjustments and we're going to leave the clean water piece out because we're, we're waiting to hear back. Kitty, yes. uh, Dave here, that falls kind of in the Medicaid bucket. I do not see why anyone would object I did, however, send a note to my committee liaison. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but I would, you know, you know, if you don't do it, you got to cut somewhere. So I would think yeah. people would want to do it. Thank you, Dave. So, um, is there anybody? Um, Dave has a recommend. These are just straw polls. Yeah. Okay. Dave has a recommendation on the table to use that thirty-eight million. If you agree with them, can I have either a blue hand or a real hand? Just something that I see. Okay, I have a majority. So I'm going to just put an okay there. Um, we also have, Dave, the uh, reduced Medicaid claims, the savings that are one time in nature because those, those procedures are going to start back up. And this is a one time expense. What is your recommendation there? Is my recommendation is to accept it. Okay. And how about committee members? Uh, can I have a blue hand or a hand? Four, five, six, seven. Okay, I have a majority. Um, the renter rebate, um, it's just aligning experience with the actuals, and that's $1.4 million. I have a thumbs up if, if people agree to the rebate. Uh, Kitty, I agree, but I didn't check in with ways and means on that. Or That's okay. This is just for our committee. So tomorrow, when hear back from your committees if it disagrees we'll go okay. thank you though diane but i heard that little baby voice in the background <laughs> lucky you to have a young voice yeah it's a little <laughs> um the bond investment earning we heard from the treasurer she was good um and we also heard that's an allowable use can i have a a yes or an, a yes if you agree with the treasurer and the administration and Okay, I have, an, uh, um, I have a majority there. The unclaimed property, is that a yes for everyone? Okay, and um, since we've all paid in the liquor tax, we might as well, <laughs> we might as well use it. <laughs> liquor tax, okay. So, so we are good with those sources. Um, so I believe that the, the, last, the last three things that we have to, um, to uh, agree upon as a committee and, and to hear from the committees of jurisdiction, obviously, but for us is the clean water, uh, how we're going to do the end of year construct, 
uh, which method that we want to use. And that will be part of our discussion tomorrow because that's going to be, um, you know, we're going to need to work through that. And clean water, the end of year adjustment. And the last thing would be uh, what um, COVID-19 expenses that we, that have been incurred that we can reflect in the budget adjustment for 2020. Am I missing something? Those are the three pieces I see outstanding. Language. Did you did you do the reserves versus accrual? Yep, that's okay. the end of the year. Yep. Okay. Oh, that's the end. All right. And language. Oops. Kitty, you're frozen. Lost kitty. <laughs> uh oh. Oh dear. Mary, uh, take over. Yeah. Okay. So it, Mary. <laughs> she's asking if there's anything else. I was suggesting it's language. I think we're all pretty clear on what needs to be done. Um, I don't know if she had anything else for us. I believe she did not. Teresa, do you have any insight I into that? I have no idea. I'm texting yeah. her now. Yeah. Um, so let's just wait and see if we hear from Kitty. Yeah. Mary, he's yeah. going to go out and come back mm -hmm. in. Okay. So Maida, was that you? Oh, yeah. Somebody's back in? Not yet. What did you have, Maida? I just had a question. Um, I, I don't know if this is accurate or not, but I had made a note to myself from the last time we were on the floor that we actually received a bill. Are we supposed to do anything with that bill? As was that free? That's what we just dealt with it. H945? Yeah, we had H945, which no. I think we did. Special okay. ed. Oh, a special ed. Do you did know that not come to us? I'm sorry? I'm sorry, what are you asking me? I'm multitasking in the background. <laughs> yeah. Did we I don't know any... if my note is accurate or not. I had a yes. note here that S343, something to yes, do with Veda, special that... ed, come to us. That's what I have a note too that goes to appropriations. Okay, I don't know. I hadn't heard that. S3... Special ed cha delay in special ed cha changes due to COVID 19. Okay. Did we I just get a bill today? Yesterday. Uh, um, yeah, the other day. Or the oh, other yesterday. day. Nobody told me that was. Yesterday, yeah. Yesterday. yesterday, it was yesterday. So I got a, uh, before we get into, can I just tell you what uh, Nadine said? Um, and Bill McGill will tag on this, but, and Becky, Rebecca, uh, Becky is in contact with them now that I've linked everybody, but it says, um, I will need the draft from the attorney, which Becky's working with her. Um, she's giving her the drafting request so she can set up the document and get it edited. Um, she asked, does it need to be voted out today for introduction tomorrow or can it be voted out tomorrow? So she needs to know the timing. Are you voting it today or voting it tomorrow? Didn't. I didn't know if the clerk's office was even open. That was what I was wondering. If it it's supposed to be there at 4 30, but okay. <laughs> but okay. maybe it has to do the most work here. So um so if you need them to get this all ready to be voted out, then we get it to the clerk. But she's like the start. So how much time is it between now and when we could vote? We could have a bill in front of us to vote. I think her office can do it rather quickly, but um, they're working on it now. So um, I think this I, is time sensitive for communities and, and the sooner so that we don't miss. Oh, and here's Bill. He says Nadine and drafting options will need to get voted out version of the committee bill and then they will put it in bill form where we get all that. Uh, he says, I will pick it up once printed and it will be introduced tomorrow. So if we, if you vote it out today, he can get it on the calendar. So um, what I could do is um, let me ask Nadine, if you want to keep going, I'll ask her how long before it'll be ready. So I apologize. My computer died and I had to go find my cord. Uh, we have the three pieces, oh. uh, the clean, what we're doing with clean water, the end of year construct, 
and COVID-19. And Steve, are you listening? I can see your name here. I have a question for you. Sure. Hi, Steve. Um, tomorrow, I don't know if you have time to come in. We, after Adam um, uh, talks to us about the language at the in the BAA regarding the $50,000 and expanding it between departments, um, we would like to have you or Maria or both of you um, explain, you know, what exactly that means and, and you know, if, if maybe not unlimited, you know, for a billion dollars, you know, is there an amount that, that in these Trump, these difficult times that we're in that we should consider as the JFO office could weigh in on and help walk us through? Great. Okay. Yeah, I know we can try to do that. Okay, and then my other question, uh, Steve, and it's coming back to my mind, and I'm, what was my other question I was going to ask you? That piece, and somebody help me. <laughs> <laughs> there were two things. There was that. Was it about accrual oh, or no, versus yeah, cash? Yeah. Yes, that's it. Thank you, Kimberly. Um, would, would you, um, would the... JFO office like to um, to weigh in on the testimony between the uh, the administration's cash proposal and the treasurer's proposal of um, you know using the dollars to come in in twenty one to be retroactive twenty is that something that you would talk to us tomorrow about the pros and cons sure. and the or would you? Yeah, I, I won't be able to add a lot. I, you know, I'm not a, I don't have a strong yeah, opinion, although that may be changing by some recent news. But um, yeah, I, I can talk to you about that. Okay. And if there is some recent news that you could share with us that would maybe help us mm -hmm. make a decision. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Kitty. Maria. Mary. Mary. Yeah. If we're just hanging around here waiting for this draft to come up and we're yes. stuck here waiting. I don't know if Steve's ready to talk to us about his opinion about the closeout, but why not do it now if, if we're just waiting anyway? Was there more information you were going to research tonight, Steve? No, I, I mean, on which, on which issue? The accrual thing? The accrual versus, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm pretty agnostic about it. Uh, I was um, uh, slightly leaning toward the idea of what Beth suggested, which was to do it in an accrual basis as opposed to the reserves. But the, the, what came out across the wire just now, and um, who knows, you know, it's a very strange national scene. That, um, the president is talking about maybe postponing the revenues, um, the tax obligations from July 15th to September 15th or October 15th. Or, and, you know, we have no control over that. That's sort of a something he can do. And if he does, then we... Um, the accrual thing is sort of out of the question then. So I, it seems to me the safer way to go is probably um, what Adam laid out because uh, the worst comes worst, the reserves will be unfilled through that period of time, but you haven't created a situation where you really can't accrue it, accrue it back. Um, so I, and I don't know how real this is, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, every day is a new day in, in the Washington world. So uh, it's, uh, but if that is a real problem, and we'll probably know, um, it does create issues for an accrual approach. Right, and we may not know that until, right. you know, they could work, you know, that could be a tomorrow decision or that could be a two week or three week from now decision. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that was a interesting timing, that headline. <laughs> just, just, it literally just, just this afternoon that, uh, the first news of that uh, came across. So, and I don't know if Beth has seen that, and we should. Probably I doubt. I doubt it. I, Are I you sending it to her, Steve? Yeah, I'll, I'll send that to her. Okay. Kimberly. Paul, yeah, I just just in terms of interesting timing, I think it's also talking about the previous bill on municipal and moving around dates and keeping track and yeah. backfilling. I mean, to me personally first impressions in uh, having to look at this a little more that was also another argument for me about why that can get a little muddy yeah mary adam 
suggested that the a reason to go with their approach was that the feds may be more willing to help us out if we've used our existing resources. Um, he said that's the way other programs have been handled and that was compelling for me too. Yes, I agree. I'm, I'm multitasking here. Yeah. And, and I don't know if, if that, you know, it's something to think about. We, we don't know if that would be a factor or not, but we wouldn't want to eliminate it as a factor. Yep. So, Kitty. Yes. At the end of the day, you know, tomorrow or the next or whenever, sometime soon, we're just going to have to say, hey, we think this is what the feds are going to do and manage it based on that. I mean, what Steve is raising is really changing our thoughts, mm -hmm. but it could change mm -hmm. again. Yeah. 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 So at some point, we just need to say we're going with something. Um, Chip, you are frozen for some reason. Chip, you're completely frozen. We'll come back to you. Diane? Thank you. I, I was uh, in the same camp that Mary was. I'm glad that we're on the same page there. When, you know, I heard from Adam when the explanation that there might be, there was a little bit of an advantage that we might be able to get forgiven. I don't like having the risk out there that our reserves are emptied out before they go, oh, look, they, they've they emptied their coffers. You know, I, I did like the accrual piece better until Steve mentioned that news. Yeah. So now it changes everything. That, that, that does put a twist. And I think the treasurer needs to, to, to hear that because she may weigh in differently. Yep. Yep. You yeah. want to try it again? Can you hear me? Now we can. Yeah. Um, no, I don't need to go into any detail. I, I feel the same way everybody else is yeah. here. I mean, I, I don't think there was a strong argument to absolutely do one or the other and this might just tip tip us, tip me anyway, towards sticking that we can. Thank you, Chip. Um, Dave and Maida? Um, I, as I thought about it, the, the two key components to the discussion were liquidity and comparability. And in my mind, if you spend all of your reserves, you've hurt your liquidity argument or position, haven't you? Even though it's for a relatively short time mm -hmm. until it gets paid back. That was the treasure, one of her arguments. Yeah. yeah. How important is liquidity? <laughs> Probably is. Maida? Uh, I, I was solidly in the camp in support of the, the treasurer's approach to this until Steve's information. I mean, we need to protect ourselves. God knows what will come out of Washington. Um, which could just totally, totally upend um, a decision that we make if we, you know, if, if indeed uh, revenues aren't going to necessarily be coming in when we think they are. I agree. Yeah. There's, there's lots of questions. Peter. Oh. Okay. Yes, I agree. We need to protect ourselves. I, I was, I had already felt that I was going to go in one specific direction. And then Steve uh, just gave us some information. So I am in the, I've really got a gnaw on this camp now and would like a little more information. I, you know, I'm, I'll make a decision if we have to, but um, I'd like to see if we could get a little more surety. Uh, number one. Number two, Kitty, I've got to leave in like four minutes. I've got a 25-minute teleconference that I must attend. I will be back by 4.30. Um, so just to let you know. Um, thank you, Peter. Um, the, the, it's at the uh, proofreaders right now, so we should have it within minutes, Peter. And okay. um, Diane, do you have a sheet ready to go and you can read a motion for us? I do. Okay, and um, Chip, your hands up. Do you have a question? No, no sorry. Okay. 
This will be, Maida's gonna report this. Maida's going to report this. This is why she was asking all those questions. So she'll be ready to the floor. I didn't want to fill it in. I was making that assumption. And then um, we don't have a number yet, but it's going to be sponsored by the committee of uh, our committee. Yeah, did we lose Bob Helm? Yes, I don't know where he went. Is he coming back on? I'll go. Okay. Um, the editors are saying uh, probably 15, 20 minutes. So I, I, I know I'm happy. They just, I'm going to be on a tele. I, I need so to take I'm this. I'm happy to do out. another Zoom a little bit later if you want. But I mean, it may be sooner, but that's what Nadine is. She said check back in 15 minutes. So <laughs> they just Zoom in at 4 30 to vote. Does that make sense to, or actually at 4 20 so we can get it to the clerk's office before 4 30? But Peter needs to get oh, in. I right? can, yeah, I'll. I'll stop my my uh, my teleconference at 4:20, and uh, and I'll come on the Zoom. You can do I'd, two screens. I'd prefer to do a uh, you know cut it short by five minutes than not start it at all. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so I will send you uh, a Zoom invite for 4:20. Okay, Perfect. and can I use that on my phone, Teresa? You can use it anywhere you want. Excellent. Then I'm going out for a walk. All right. Thank you, guys. Take us Bye. out, Teresa. Bye. Oh, we gotta go offline. Oh, yeah, yeah I gotta.